again good morning to all to you all and happy sabbath to you all praise the lord praise the lord thank you we're going to thank the holy spirit for bringing us here we could be somewhere else but we choose to come here amen 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 o'neill they are a little bit quiet this morning and i want to wake them up <laughs> well, that's all right. it is that's early all right. the sabbath morning and we have maybe, to maybe, give they have, maybe they have a difficult week so Amen. Mm, yeah. So I want to start off with something different this morning. This is the New England South Sabbath School at the Mount Zion Seventh-day Adventist Church. So I want to meet everybody. So it's Sabbath school, but before we do our song service, we're going to sing. It's a good time to get acquainted. Amen. Amen. So we're going to a fellowship before we begin. Amen. Amen. It's a good thing to be acquainted. It's a good time to know the one who's sitting right beside you. Just smile and say hello. Goodbye, loneless feeling, farewell, glasses stare. Yes. Here's my hi, my name is Nikisha. So put your hands right here and say hello. Hello. Amen, amen. amen. Good morning, amen. everybody. There, morning. there are the smiles, there are the smiles. Now we are going to relax our brain, relax our mind, and we're going to sing a few songs. Number 83, Oh, Worship the King. Get your hymnals and just sing with us, oh, worship the king. Amen, amen. Okay. After three, hymn number 83. One, two, three. Oh, worship the king of glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing. His wonderful love, our shield, our defender, the ancient of days, pavilion in splendor, and guarded with praise. Oh, tell of his might, oh, sing of his grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy space. His chariots of wrath, the deep thunder clouds formed, and dark is his path on the wings of the storm. 
Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain. And sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail. In thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, O oh tender, O oh firm to the end. Our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. Amen. 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 Our next hymn, Wake the Song. Hymn number 34, Wake the Song. Hymn number 34. Wake the song of joy and gladness. Either bring your now. Come on, everybody, let us sing. Banish every tort of sadness, pouring forth your highest praise. Sing to him whose care has brought us once again with friends to meet. And whose loving voices taught us of the way to Jesus. Wake the song, wake the song, wake the song. The song of joy and gladness. Wake the song, wake the song, wake the song, wake the song, the song of jubilee. Joyfully with songs and banners, we will greet the festal day. Shout aloud our glad hosanna, and our grateful homage pay. We will chant our Savior's glory, while our thoughts we raise above. Telling still the old, old story, sweetly draw us near to God. Make the song, wake the song, wake the song, the song, the song of joy and gladness. Wake the song, wake the song, wake the song, wake the song, the song of jubilee. He said, thanks to thee, thanks to thee, O Holy Father, for the mercies of the years. May each heart as here we gather, swell with gratitude sincere. Thanks to thee, O loving Savior, for redemption through thy blood. Breathe upon us, Holy Spirit, sweetly draw us near to break the song. Wake the song, wake the song, the song of joy and gladness. Wake the song, wake the song, wake the song, wake the song, the song of joy. One more time. Let the song, wave the song, wave the song, wave the song, the song of joy and gladness. Wave the song, wave the song, wave the song, wave the song, the song of jubilee. Amen. 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 That's it. That's it. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. How are you today? Just want to thank you so much. Welcome to our Sabbath School program. We are from New England South, and it's the, the conclusion of Week of Prayer. It is an honor and a privilege for us to be here today. And the theme that we are covering today is Believe in the Promise. Believe in the Promise. So, who wants to tell me what is a promise? 
Anybody brave enough to tell me what the promise is? No one knows what the promise is. No one never made a promise before. No, no one knows what the promise is? It's a comfort to a fool. But why is it to have more faith in a person when they make a promise? They have to keep the promise. They have to have a history of honoring promises. And the more they honor the promise, the stronger our faith become. Correct? And that's how God works. So, anybody ever green thumb? Anybody can, anybody here plants? No one plants anything. No one knows a promise is nobody plants anything. I love this church. Anybody, anybody ever plant anything before? Yes? Have you ever heard of a, a plant called the Chinese bamboo plant? Anyone know what that is? You know what that bamboo is, right? It's a very strong material, correct? It's very strong. But with the bamboo plant, with the Chinese bamboo plant, when you plant it, you have to water it every day. How long does it take for it to shoot up? Six months? If you think it's six months, put your hands up. You say a year. Anybody think it takes longer than a year? Anybody think it takes longer than a year? Please. Four years? Three years. I see three. Anybody can beat three. Three, three. Three going once, going twice. Anybody think it's going higher than three? Sixteen years. No, that's some bamboo plant. No, it takes five years. But you have to keep watering it every day, diligently. If you don't water that plant, it won't grow. And that's how the promise is from God. You see, he's building the roots. So while we can't see above, below the surface... That's how God promises works. So as we continue to go through this program and explore what it means to believe in the promise, we're going to start off with our opening prayer. Ethan, could you please come forward and pray for us, followed by our scripture reading. Dear Holy Father, thank you for bring us here together today to worship you. Hope that you will guide and protect us as we go throughout this service and be with everything that happens. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Sanaya, and the scripture reading for today is Luke 10, 18 to 20. I'll read it. Let us all stand. I'll read in your hearing. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give, you, give unto you power to tread the serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names written, are written in heaven. Amen, everyone. Amen. All right. At this time, we're going to break out into our first activity. Carrie and Warren will be joining me to do this activity. And um, how should we start this? Um, so let me describe what we're going to do, what we're going to attempt to do. We're going to put you guys in groups, OK? So I'm going to ask you guys if you can come squeeze together. Should this be, how many groups do you think we should do, Carrie? We could do two groups. Two groups? Um, but if we come together, like come in a little more than. Could you guys, do you guys mind coming together a little bit closer so we can form these groups? And while we do that, we have it's a group one and group two. Yes. And just assign, assign yourself a group leader. We just assign yourself a group leader. This is the, these are some questions. I just need a group leader over here. Anybody? Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, while you guys gather and get into groups, the best way to describe it is, is this. We're going to go through, everybody know what a mission story is, right? 
we're going to go through mission stories that encapsulate what it means to believe in the promise. And we've provided you guys with some questions you guys need to think about and answer as a group. All right? Straightforward? All right, turn it over to Carrie Ann Warren. She'll do the first uh, mission story, so to speak. All right. Thank you, Elton. And so this first story, again, we're talking about believing in the promise. And we know that every day we go through some real-life crisis. Now, this first story you may be familiar with because it's one of our very own um, pastor in our faith, John T. Boston. Have you guys heard about John Boston? He's a pastor over, or he was, in, uh, he was pastoring in Ohio the time of this event. And this was back in 2015. Anyone familiar with that story? You are familiar with it, right? All right, so we're going to talk about it and share it with everyone. And I think Elton already gave out the sheet that says activity. And so these are the two questions you're going to discuss in your groups once we get started, right? Question number one says, how did the story make you feel? And which part stood out the most, right? And then you're going to see if you could relate it to a Bible story or something that's kind of similar to what we discussed. All right, so the, again, we're talking about Pastor John T. Boston. And so it's, the article starts off by asking, do you believe in angels? And then it says 77% of Americans think that angels are real, including an Ohio pastor who insists an angel saved his life after a horrific uh, crash, right? So it tells us that... Um, he was driving on Airport Road in Co Columbus, Ohio in 2015 when another car crossed the center line and came barreling towards him. He swerved, missed the vehicle, and struck a utility pole. A life transformer came down on his car. Immediately, the metal and glass began to buckle due to the intense heat from thousands of volts of electricity. So can you guys imagine the scene of that um, crash, right? It says that uh, Boston, he was trapped inside the car. He says the seatbelt was uh, stuck and door wouldn't open. Um, and then Boston says a scruffy looking stranger came out of nowhere and he easy, easily opened the smashed door. Boston, uh, Boston says the man removed him from the car and walked him 20 yards away from the vehicle to safety just before the car exploded. Um, he says, my name is Johnny. The police are almost here, and I can't be here when they get here, but you're going to be okay. And then the man was gone. Then first responders arrived and rushed Boston to the hospital, where he was treated for what turned out to be only minor injuries. Boston was questioned about the mysterious man. Again, remember, a man named Johnny came, opened the door, pulled him out 20 yards to safety, right? Um, that's before the car exploded in flames. So then when the firefighters came on the scene, they had a few different reports uh, based on what they saw. So I'm just going to read a few of what the firefighters said. Um, one says, uh, there are some aspects of what happened that defy logic, reason, and science. Uh, another says, no one should be, sh no one should been able to touch or walk away from a car with a life transformer on top of it. Um, another one said, they're designed to immediately reset themselves and electricity was still cursing through the car when help arrived on the scene. Another one said, with a transformer on the car, that's probably one of the worst runs we could roll up on. And then also another one said that there's a life transformer on the vehicle, which is extremely complicated. The person who touches that car, he's ground. You have to jump away from the vehicle and shuffle your feet, but even that's a risky. But yet, in Boston's case, both he and Johnny weren't badly hurt. It gives me goosebumps, one firefighter says. Right? He decided to share his story publicly in hopes of aspiring others who may have lost their faith. I don't think angels come to us with wings and white robes, shining lights. I think they come to help. So think about the scene of that incident, right? No one should have survived, right? The car burst out in flames, and I wish I had, like, the visual to show you. So it was really bad. But again, he left with only minor injuries. So I want you to think again. How does that story make you feel? Which part stood out the most? 
And can you relate this to a story that we've seen in the Bible? Thank you so much, Carrie. That story is amazing. So amazing. If you don't believe in angels, you have to, be, you have to admit that is a miracle to survive such an event. At this time in your groups, let's take a minute. Let's take a minute and, and we'll ask you to bring a representative to come up and answer the two questions, okay? All right, one minute, guys. All right, you guys need more time? <clears throat> Any group is ready? All right, 30 more seconds. Oh, you said yes, you were ready? Was that the yes? You oh, you need more time. All right, go ahead, please. 30 more seconds. You're good, oh, here we go. I will start in one minute. That'll allow group two to get their thoughts together and then we'll do it. Thank you so much. One, you can proceed. So, how did the story make, make us feel? Uh, it made us feel that God was present, especially when there is a need or when we are in danger. So, we are reassured of the presence of the Lord. And then the other feeling is that uh, we are reassured that angels comes in different forms, right? And there is angelic power at play. And uh, can you think of a story in the Bible? The story they could think of is a good Samaritan. And then the other story is Daniel in the lion's den. Uh, and then also, one of the things that stood out the most to them, I'm sorry, back to that, is the pastor's faith. And is, by God's grace, his ability to live and to tell this story. And I happen to know the pastor too. I know him. Um, before you go, group one, let me ask a question. They said the angel was scruffy. Why would the angel be scruffy? Seriously. <laughs> so that begs the question, or what we said earlier, the angel comes in different form. So you don't have to look beautiful, you know, whatever. The angel, the angel comes to assist, and that's the most important thing. Regardless of whatever form the angel comes in, there's no particular reason why he was scruffy. <laughs> I like that you said that. As a matter of fact, I was watching a, a video last night where John was being interviewed by, I'm um, going to assume he's a pastor, but the, um, they asked that same question. And so John's response was that the angel had to be scruffy because that's his guardian angel and he has done so many things in his past. So all the work that he's done, like, 
yeah. you know, that's how he answered that question. All right, group two. All right, good morning, everyone. So this story, how did it make us feel um, well protected, knowing that um, whatever situation we are in, that God always sends someone or always send help. Um, and that's why we can believe the promise, believe in the promise that he will always be with us. He will never leave us and he will never forsake us. Which part of the story stood out most? Um, one of my sister there talks about um, not hearing anything about him praying. Um, we don't have to hear that, but we know that in situations like this, one of the most um, important thing is to call out to Jesus. And immediately he heard his heart, he sees his heart, he hears him, and he answered. He sent a, an angel. One of the um, report from one of the firefighters, it says that this person must be ground. Amen? On Christ's solid rock I stand. Amen? Amen. Uh, you know, when we are, we, we stand on our firm foundation, which is Christ, we are ground. We can overcome and we can succumb anything, knowing that God is always there with us. And it's incredible. Um, they took our story, the Good Samaritan. <laughs> That's one of our story. Um, yeah. And I think that is it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, before you go, before you go, for those who don't believe in the promise and don't believe in God, do you believe he survived by accident? What made him survive and unscathed? You know, I don't know what made him survive, but I believe that when, when we exercise our faith, and I believe that when in, in, in times of trouble, when when in times of trouble, God will always be there with us. And it doesn't mean that he's going to call upon him at that moment. But probably on the way there, he was talking to him. Anything could have happened. But I believe that his faith has um, brought him through. And I believe that he believed in the promises of God. And because of that, he, um, God protected him. Amen. Thank you so much. Give it up for both group, group one and group two. Thank you so much. Amen. And at this time, we're going to move into our Sabbath school lesson. We'll be facilitated by Will. Thank you so much, Will. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. All right. Let's get a little more lively. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Amen. Safely through another week, God has brought us on our way. All right. I'm very excited to be in the house of the Lord. Very excited. Now... I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited about this quarter's lesson, right? When I think about the great controversy, certain things that come to my mind is the last days, the end times, right? And when we think about the end times, there are so many different signs that we can find in the Bible that tells us about that. For example, we know that there are going to be pestilences, right? We know that there are going to be wars and rumors of wars, right? We also know that there are going to be famines, but one of the things that we also know is that there are going to be earthquakes in diverse places. How many of us felt that earthquake yesterday, right? <laughs> so this is nothing new to us. I mean, if we as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, we understand that the signs are in the Bible. God already gave us the information. So what we should be doing is preparing ourselves and not being afraid, but sharing the word with others. Amen? Amen. So friends, I know that we are on a tight ship here, so I want to make sure that we are diving into the lesson. Keep in mind, we are not going to do the lesson. We are going to review the lesson, all right? So I'm just going to ask a couple of the, my folks here if you guys can get some mics, one on this side, one on this side, because I'm going to make it very interactive, okay? So you guys are going to review with me. This week's lesson is entitled, The War Behind All Wars. Now, before we dive into it, I'm just going to ask you guys to close your eyes for a quick moment of prayer. Father, not as I will, but as you will. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, as I mentioned earlier before, the war behind all wars. Now, I was doing a little bit of research because I personally wanted to find out how many wars are actually recorded in Earth's history. Can anyone give me a number? How many wars do you guys think have actually been recorded in the history of our world? Throw out some numbers. 
200, that's too low. Think higher. Thousands. Think higher. Not so high. <laughs> so according to research, right, according to research, they say it was about 10,000 wars that have actually been recorded. 10,000 wars um, have been recorded in our Earth's history. But when we think about the title of this particular lesson that says the war behind all wars, it's suggesting that there was a war that started it all, okay? There's a war that started it all. So I'm going to ask somebody on this side here if you guys can just read the memory text for us. Whoever can find it very quickly, if you can read the memory text for us, and my follow-up question to that, once you've read it, is can you also give us a breakdown of what's actually going on in that text, and what do you feel is the reason behind this controversial war? So I'm going to ask somebody to read the text for us. You already have the mic. Go for it. And the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Amen. And that's found in Revelations chapter 12, verses 7 and 8. So my brother, while you still have the mic, I'm going to ask you to answer this question for us to the best of your ability. Can anyone share with us, or as you, uh, can you share with us, what is actually going on? So give us a breakdown of what's going on in this text, and what do you feel is the reason behind this controversial war? All right, so the, the venue is in heaven, right? Okay. And uh, there's a conflict. There is a challenge between good and evil, mm -hmm. right? And there was a resultant war or conflict. Or, and uh, as a result of that, um, good prevailed. Mm -hmm. And evil was uh, thrust out in the form of um, Satan. Because there was no place for him anymore. Amen. And uh, the fact that he resorted to uh, evil. Okay. All right. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. So the lesson, this week's, uh, the lesson kind of kicks us off with two profound questions. And I'm sure these are questions that we have heard before, or we've heard other non-believers say this. For example, they say, if God is so good, why is the world so bad? We've heard that before, right? We've also probably heard, how can a God of love allow so much evil to exist? We've heard this before, right? But you and I, we all know that God is love. How many of us can truly say that we know that God is love? Show of hands. Amen. I want to ask Elton, if you can bring the mic to someone over here on this side, can anyone share with us? Because you say that you believe that God is love. What evidence proves that for you in your life? What evidence? I'm here today. Yes. He cares for me and my family every single day. Amen. He brought me from home to here. No accidents. You know, I don't have any, praise God, no major illness. Amen. So that's how I see his love in the simplest things. The eclipse is coming on Monday. Mm -hmm. I have eyes. I can see it. So Amen. stuff like that. Amen. You know? And these are the small things that we take for granted in our lives, right? The mere fact that we wake up every single morning, that demonstrates that God is love. The mere fact that you can use all five of your senses correctly, that demonstrates that God is love, okay? Now, one of the things that it also shares here is that God's very nature is love. It also shares with us that love can never be forced, nor can it be coerced. So what does this tell you and I about what goes on in heaven? That the very principle of his governance is love, all right? All right. Now, one thing that I want to share before we actually move on, I like that it states here, it says... To deny the power of choice is to destroy the ability of love. And to destroy the ability to love is to eradicate the possibility of being truly happy. So therefore, God wins our allegiance by his love. All right? So friends, now as it was read so beautifully in Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 8, we know that there's a war that was taking place, correct? There's a war that was taking place. Now, in Revelation chapter 7, verses 7 to 9, right, as you guys have probably already read it, but my question for you is, when Lucifer had rebelled, in what ways could God have responded? Now, think about that. 
We're talking about a God who created the universe. He created every being that's in heaven. In what way could he have responded to the rebellion? He could totally wipe it out. Absolutely. Anyone else? He could have, yeah. Because of other worlds, and to let them know that what he's doing is not right, it has to manifest itself. So all we do is just put him aside that you see how oh, evil grow. Yeah, yeah. So now, as we're thinking about that, because you guys shared it, I mean, you hit it right on the head. God could have wiped out yes. Lucifer yes. and everyone else that decided that they wanted to follow. Right? But now think about this. What impact or message could the wrong response have had or conveyed to the angels that actually remained? Yeah, exactly. So as she stated, they probably would have feared God. Now, as we stated earlier before, love can't be forced. Love cannot be coerced, right? We have to do it with our own free will. And that's what love is all about here. Now, as we think about that, that also demonstrates the type of God that we serve. Now, when it asks us here to compare Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 and 15, but also Isaiah 14, uh, 12 to 14, I like what it asks here. It says, uh, what went on in the mind of the angelic being called Lucifer that led to his rebellion. Now, before we answer that question, before we answer that question, I want you to take note to this very question where it tells us what's so important about this particular message as it relates to sin. What is it telling us about sin? So thinking about this question, it says, what went on in the mind of Lucifer that led him to the rebellion? Thinking about that question, what does that tell us about sin? Ah, it starts in the mind, okay? So he began to sin in his mind. He began to sin in his mind. So why don't we answer that question? What was actually going on in his mind that led him to the rebellion? Yes, jealousy, what else? Pride, what else? Envy, what else? Selfishness, what else? All of the above, right? Just, just, just take it all out, right? Self-exaltation. He was discontent, right? He was discontent, even though he was, the, he was the leader. He was beautiful, and yet he was still discontent. Yes, he was still discontent. Yes. All right. But now what this tells us is that God did not create evil, friends. We have to understand this. This angelic being was created perfect. This is what we understand. Included in his perfection was the freedom of choice, which is a fundamental principle of God's government, which runs by love and not coercion. Okay? So the question is, what was actually the cause of this war in heaven? Based on what we just read here, right? We know that in his mind he began to sin. He was already thinking about, uh, he, he, he felt discontent. He wasn't happy. He, uh, uh, he was exalting himself. So what was the very cause of this war? Okay, that's part of it. That's part of it. What was the cause of the war? Okay. There we go. There we go. He wanted worship, friends. He wanted worship. And that's what the lesson is teaching us here. It says, Lucifer, a created being... He desired the worship that belongs only to the creator. He attempted to usurp God's throne by questioning God's authority. His rebellion led to open warfare in heaven. Now, friends, in my Bible here, I actually have a prophecy edition Bible, and it, it, it gives me some really um, great information. It says, why is worship such a big thing? Worship is the key factor in the ongoing warfare between God and Satan. People were created to be happy and fulfilled only when they worship God solely. Understand this. So it says that Satan sought worship in the beginning. Centuries later, when he tempted Christ in the wilderness, he was seeking worship. But also in these very last days, my friends, Satan will be trying to force people to worship him 
or else they will be killed. Okay? So this is all about worship. This was all about worship, and this is the reason for this controversy, friends. So now as we think about this war that's going on in heaven, right? He's rebelling. He has these feelings that are going on, which started in his mind, which caused him now to rebel. Now Lucifer now seeks on to deceive and take others down with him, okay? He seeks to take others down with him. Now, he accused God of being an unjust and, and, and unfair. In fact, he infected the angels with his doubts and accusations. Now, it tells us in Revelation, now we were asked to read in Revelation 12, verses 4. But the question is, what does this passage reveal about Satan's ability to deceive? How many of the angels fell for his lies about God? So why don't you guys answer that for us? What does this tell us about Satan's ability to actually deceive? If Satan can deceive a third of the angels in heaven, angelic beings, what's to say he can't do it to us? Absolutely. Now, we also had the second part of the question that was answered as well. One third of the angels decided to follow him, right? One third of the angels. So friends, as we humans, what does this reveal to us as humans and the strict precautions that we should take when putting faith in our own strength to overcome the wiles of the devils? What does this tell us? No, no, we're not bound to fail. Absolutely. We are no match for Satan, but... I, hold on, I hear a voice. I can't see him, though. Who is saying it? Me. So I'm oh, saying yes. that, Go yeah. She's saying that we are no match for Satan, but I wouldn't say that. I would say that, yeah, we have no match. No, she said that we're bound to fail, um, but I disagree with that. Uh, on ourselves, all by ourselves, we are bound to fail, mm -hmm. but we're no match for Satan, but we have to rely... Rely on 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 Jesus in order to be victorious. Amen. Amen. B because he's very influential. We can of ourselves. We can do little or nothing. Amen. Of the angels with him, plus and some, we have to clothe ourselves, and also bring the sword. So absolutely, absolutely. Now all of that begins. Putting on that whole armor, we have a hand up here, and as they're bringing over the mic, I'm just going to say this last few words. As we, right here, to my right, to my right, to my right, there we go. As we think about putting on that whole armor of God, it begins with us making a conscious choice, my friend. Yes, good morning. Um, I looked at it this week like this. If Satan can influence, so can we. Ah, speak to it. D dig deeper. Now... I'm going to say it like this. If we're truly trying to have a personal relationship with God and it's a process, we can and we do in our own way influence other people. Absolutely. At home, at work, wherever. It's our lifestyle that we want to live. So if Satan can influence, so can we. And it's two ways, the wrong or the right. Or the right. Now, my mother and I were talking about um, at one point, it was two-thirds of the angels, or three, was it three? Three-fourths, mm -hmm. until that other portion probably put on bricks and said, hold up, wait a minute, hold up, you crazy, I ain't going with you. Right. That's the same way we can do. They saw things, okay. because God allowed them to have that type of mind. I truly believe Satan just didn't love his creator. Hmm. So that made him think, because the love is here. Amen. It made him think that I can be better than him. And he start, his mind start wheeling and everything. And you had them foolish angels that did fall with him. But I read something in Ellen G. White where they wanted to fight Satan when they got down here. Wow. They wanted to fight him because they said, you made us. You made, that's right, you made us come down here with you. It's not what you lied. You lied. But they all had the gift of choice. Amen. Amen. The Amen. gift of choice. The, gift of the choice. same thing with us. Everything that happened up there, God's given us the same opportunity Amen. down here. Amen. So it's nothing different. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. And as she stated, the angels had to decide, right? They had to decide whether they were going to follow Jesus or whether they were going to follow Lucifer. Now, believe it or not, 
we make that same choice every single day. In every aspect of our lives. From the food choices that we make, we're choosing God or Satan. From the friends or the company that we keep, we're choosing God or Satan, right? From the very clothes that we wear on our back, <laughs> we're choosing God or Satan. You have the mic? Go for it. Come on, give him a mic that works. Give him a mic that works. I see this practice of Satan going on now. One third of the angels were following him. We have a former president who has a lot of felonies and et cetera going on, but he's got followers. I can understand how these people see this man is going wrong, but they still are following him. Mm -hmm. So if you ask the question, how can all this stuff be going on? We have a powerful God. These people are still following Satan. That's right. Satan is their leader. Yeah. And so that, again, brings us back to the choice, the choices that we make. And it is our wor work, our work to go out there and to preach that gospel to every nation, kindred, and tongue. So now I see that time is rapidly approaching, so I want to share a couple of final thoughts here. It says here that God has called his people to respond to his love and to be obedient to his commands by choosing to serve him. So once again, folks, this is emphasizing the empower, the importance of making a conscious choice. Now think about this. We know that the war started in heaven, right? And after that rebellion went down, God decided he was going to cast them out. There's no place for this here in this perfect heaven. So now planet earth gets involved, okay? Planet earth gets involved. As we know the Lord's prayer, it says that thy will be done on earth as it is in as it is in heaven. So now when God created earth, we understand that he gave Adam and Eve the same freedom of choice that he had gave to Lucifer, right? He gave them the same freedom of choice. And as we already know the narrative, you know, they were placed in the garden. God spoke to them. He let them know this is the tree of good and evil. Don't touch it. Don't go near it. Leave it alone. But it didn't necessarily go that way. They exercised their freedom of choice. Right? They exercise their freedom of choice. Now, as we think about the very details of this scene, we can see that God's love was shown here as well, right? Because he was allowing them an opportunity to exercise their freedom of choice. But now, here's a profound question for you. Can someone share with us what's the distinction between God giving someone a freedom of choice, but when we think about this particular scene, Someone who doesn't know better may say that they were tempted. So what's the distinction between God giving freedom of choice and someone feeling tempted? Jesus came and allowed us to overcome, he allowed us to overcome temptation. Now, before we talk about being tempted, that wasn't the first thing that Adam and Eve did. Adam and Eve was given a um, specific instruction to not leave each other's side. The first thing Eve did was leave his side. And from leaving his, si from leaving his side, she then became tempted through Satan. Okay. Okay. That's an interesting perspective. Anyone else? What's the distinction? All right. Since we're, we're short on time, I'm going to give it to you. Think about this. As we stated, God is love. And when he gives us free will, it's driven by when someone is tempted, it's driven by evil. That's the difference. It's when you, right. Correct. Sin. So that, that's in the, I think that's a complete distinction between sure. what you're saying, choice. We all have been given the power of choice, and God expects us to use that what? The power of choice. The power of choice. To do what? To do good and to choose him. And he has enough evidence where we can choose him. But you can't dwell on that temptation for too long. You know that? Mm-hmm. Too long, then you're going to just go right over. You feed into it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But once again, we serve a God who loves because as we think about it, it says that God's love finds a way. 
right? Because we know that Adam and Eve have sinned, and God has told them that they must leave the garden, uh, their garden home. From now on, they will have to toil and suffer and go through a lot because of their sin. However, when we read in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, what does this tell us? This tells us that God will put enmity. He will put enmity. And what does that mean? That means that the seed of the woman, of course, which is Jesus Christ, the cross, Satan bruised his, at the cross, Satan bruised his heel. But Jesus' victory is our guarantee that one day the serpent's head will be crushed. And the door of suffering and death that Adam and Eve opened will one day be closed. All right. Does that not give you some hope? Does that not give you hope? Amen. Amen. So now as we think and as we're getting ready to wrap up, I like what it states here. It says the Bible speaks of Jesus who came to this world and he experienced heartache. He experienced disappointment and the pain and, and pain in common with all humanity. It reveals a Christ who faced the same temptations that we faced, a Christ who triumphed over the principalities and powers of hell, both in this life and through his death on the cross, all uh, for each and every one of us personally. So it tells us here that he did this because he loved us. And it's a powerful reason for us to have hope in God. All right. It's a powerful reason for us to have hope in God. Now, friends, as I stated, my time is running short. So I just want to read this last and final statement here, which is found in Thursday's lesson, which tells us that God now, because of his sacrifice at the cross. He now be, has become our high priest, which means that he is advocating for us, which means that he is making atonement for us in heaven. And this is something that gives us hope, all right? He is forever making intercession on our behalf, and all we need to do is accept his grace. So it states here in Thursday's lesson as I get ready to wrap up, to state that it is very simple. Jesus presents to us before the universe as clothed, in his righteousness, saved by his death, and redeemed through his blood. Everything that we should have been, he, it, he was. In Christ, there is no condemnation for the sins of our past. In Christ, our guilt is gone. And through his mighty intercession, the grip of sin on our lives is broken. That means that the chains that bound us are loosed, and friends, we are free. Amen. Amen. So this, again, gives us full evidence that we serve a mighty God, but we serve a God who is a God of love. As we stated before, he could have reacted in any way that he wanted to because he is the creator. He can do whatever he wants. But instead, he wanted to further demonstrate his love even through this great controversy that he is truly a God of love. And when he comes back, our God will be vindicated. Have a happy Sabbath. Amen. Thank you so much, Will. R appreciate it. Thank you for the participation. Um, at this time, we're going to have a musical special by Justin. But before we do that, are any deacon and deaconesses here right now to collect the, the offering? No? All right. Deacon? Thank you. So while the music plays, um, we'll collect the, the offering. And, um, and we'll pray for the offering afterwards. Thank you so much.
Amen. At this time, we're going to pray over the offering that was collected. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we lift up this offering in a special way. We pray that it will go towards your will. Be with those, O oh Lord, who are in need, O oh Lord, and help us not just to give, but to be cheerful givers. This we pray in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And at this time, if you take a look at the video screen, we're going to have a, a video presentation at this time. Thank you. Believe the promise. Digest his word. Though the surrounding world has gone mad absurd, I pray we clasp and we grasp the wisdom to discern. We trust in things AI generated, digitally manipulated. Some even guide their lives by deception pixelated. Others play fast and loose with alternative truths, predicated on the premises that we can revere the created versus the creator, touting rebellious ideas as ideals, attempts to usurp completely like we are the divine or the universe bestows. All this blasphemy, fundamental idolatry. Trust the process is a common chorus but how often do we tend to lend our ear and turn our hearts towards the promissory of his ever-present glory and his soon return? Like coal mines and canaries, let's take heed because trust and believe all wickedness will burn. Iniquity set ablaze, reduced to rubble, subatomic stubble. Guided by truth, we sojourn, following that bright beacon which divides darkness asunder. Keep pace with the one who lights the sun, radiates celestial luminaries, for he is the force and the source. We can concur with his covenants. While some stand on business, I'm positioned on the promises. Staying solid, not sinking. When the soil becomes wetter, I'm upheld through stormy weather. So whether or not you choose to believe Believe, God's words will always be top tier, impeccable. So rest assured when he tells you we have nothing to fear. Accept as truth his proxemics, intimate and personal, never leaving nor forsaking you. Be filled with the knowledge that while this world does all the taking, he comes only to restore, redeem and empower. No Clorox, because of him I'm washed clean. Our God pours out his spirit so we are supplied with the vision. Martin Luther, we don't just dream the dream, endowed with insight and comprehension, we build the things. So keep on contending for the faith of the king. And when you wonder how those doors will open, lean on the locksmith who's done away with the latches, the one who has the means to make the impossible happen. Cattle on a thousand hills, turns this world's won't into his will, using all things for it to be fulfilled. Our God parted seas, made water travel uphill, elevated waves. Without any vessel, we soar to unthinkable heights, gliding on currents, lifted by his spirit, powered by his might. Above all, when the devil starts capping, believe we are armed with extraterrestrial artillery powered by divinity, which already dismantled the enemy's plots of futility. We are overcomers, so put on your vest and his truth to the test. Be directed by the Ruha breath of this verse. Believe his blueprint is for you and not against. His affinity and affections towards us are boundless and immense. You are the apple of his eye, honey crisp. You, your life, has already been bought and paid for, not in coins or bits, but by divine drops spent. Believe you are rare, a priceless work of art, customized, one of one, bespoke, set apart for his sanctified and unique use. Set free, in him bonds and chains are loose. Through him there is not a thing you cannot do. I choose to accept that his gospel is good, infallible, immutable. I believe not just because of what I've seen, but because he is the truth. Despite contradicting doubts sown to deceive, uproot those weeds and know hope, faith, belief, and obedience pave the way to our prepared eternity. Amen. That Shiloh's very own Elder Burton. Awesome job. That was very awesome. It was. It was. All right. Let's get into our, our next activity. Uh, Carrie Warren was handing out strips of paper. Put up your hand if you received a strip of paper from Carrie Ann. And what are on these paper? Can someone tell me what is on one of these papers that they received? It's a scripture reading, okay? So, question to you guys. In this world, we'll have trouble, right? But has God left anything for us to inspire us during these times of trouble? Are we alone? No. But in this world, we have all kind of trouble, right? So, for this next activity, what we're going to do is, let's carry hand out the paper. We're going to go through different trials that we are facing right now. And if the scripture you have, you believe, applies to resolving that problem or to comfort you through that problem, 
we ask you to stand and read it, okay? Clear? All right. So let's get it started. Carrie, would you like to kick it off for us, please? All right. So we're talking about everyday crisis. All right. And these are things that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, health crisis. If you're dealing with an illness. I gave out several Bible texts. Does anyone have one that we can hold on to when we're going through it? Health crisis. I see a hand in the back. Maybe we should have a mic in the back somewhere. Um, so if you have a Bible promise uh, that, uh, that we can hold on to for someone that's dealing with any uh, illness, disease, or any injury, go ahead and read it. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. That's a good one. Uh, what about financial crisis? Does anyone go through financial crisis at times? All right. What can we hold on to? Anyone has anything? And Philippians 4 and verse 19, it states, And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. So remember that the Lord will uh, provide for us according to his riches. Um, natural disaster. We'll talk about the natural disasters that we will experience um, in the last days. Earthquake. What can we hold on to? Anyone has anything? Yes, earthquake, hurricane. As you talk about earthquakes and things like that, um, I'm going to see if I can apply this. So it says Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? So if there's any hurricanes or anything, you have to be in the basement or something. He takes care of them. He takes care of us. So he will take care of the birds and the stuff he has to give us. That was great. Excellent. Yes. And we have the younger ones in here. What about educational crisis? You're in a class. You're struggling. You're trying to pass a test. What can we hold on to? Even if you don't have a strip with a text, if you can think of a promise, um, feel free to share. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. All right. Um, we'll do a couple more, Elton. Yeah, sure. All right. What about those that is dealing with um, safety, crime, violence? That's something that we experience. What has God promised us? What promise can we hold on to? All right. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 27, verse 1. All right. Amen. Thank you so much, Berta. All right. How about this one? Uh, global crisis. And when we talk about global crisis, what are we talking about? We we're talking about pandemics. And wars that may affect you and affect your loved one. This text says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and form, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Psalms 46 one through three. Amen. Amen. All right. This is a good one. What about identity crisis? Questioning one's purpose and worth. Who am I? We have a hand in the back. Psalms 37 4. Take delight in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your hearts. Amen. All right. Awesome. This is an interesting one. Immigration crisis. 
deportation, asylum seeking, displacement. Oh, one second. Okay, this one is good. It says Hebrews 13, 5 through 6. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. So we can confidently say the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? That's a great one. Amen. Any parents in here? Do we have any parents but younger children? Mm -hmm. All right. So you are struggling with your children. What can you hold on to? Hold on to faith. All right. Anyone has a text to share? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Right? right. Awesome. All right. Let's do one more. How about a good one here? How about technology crisis? It's really cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. Need to be fear of missing out. Right. Is there a scripture for that in these modern times? Our God left nothing for us in times like these. Even if, it, even if it's not one of these strips of paper, any scripture you can think of. Oh, we have one here, and we have two, so let's do him and then let's do her. That's fine. Let, we'll just let her go first, and then you go next. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you whenever you go. Amen. Amen. Go on. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Could you say that in the mic, please? Psalm 55 reminds us to cast our burdens upon the Lord, and he'll strengthen us. So for every problem here, God has left us a solution. We are not alone. All right. As you remember in our first activity today, we went through a, I would call it like a mission story, and then we had two questions we were trying to analyze and answer. Um, we had two groups, but the group has gotten bigger. <laughs> so um, should we... Maybe we should make this a group, one okay. here. One. Well, we already have one group. Well, we already have a group right here. Yeah. So we need, let's make this a group, please. This a group and another group. There's two more groups. Right. All right. Did ever, does every group I point on, do you have this paper with the questions on it? I'll recite the questions, but I'll still pass it out if you need it. The question said, how did the story make you feel? Which part of the story stood out most? And can you think of a story in the Bible that you can relate the story? We talked about the story with John T. Boston and his accident and how an angel saved him, um, for those that missed it. All right, all right. So this is story number two. There's a guy called Charles Mooley, and he's from Kenya. Anybody ever been to Kenya before? I heard it's lovely. Never been there. At the age of six, he woke up one morning and his family was gone. He, they abandoned him. So what did he do? He started begging in the streets, and he also started to steal. While doing that, he could only depend on the kindness of strangers. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Could you, ah, this is better, right? I'm so sorry about that. Start over? All right. There's a guy called Charles Mooley. He's from Kenya. At the age of six, he woke up one morning and his entire family was gone. He was, he was abandoned. What he did to survive, he went in the streets where he started begging and he started stealing. He became friends with the homeless. He had no choice. He started relying on the kindness of strangers and the family took him in and allowed him to do, you know, yard work and that type of thing. While there, he was introduced to the church, but because he was from the street and he was, you know, dirty, he was rejected from the church. We wouldn't do that here, right? He was rejected from the church. And he, had to went, he went back into the streets. Then he got an opportunity. He learned how to, he saved up the money he was, he, he was um, soliciting and he bought one car. One car. What did he do with this car? 
he, started, he turned into a taxi. And then one taxi turned into two taxis, and two taxis turned into, and, two, and three taxis turned into, you heard the story before. And he kept multiplying. And then he went to, he, then he bought a bus. And then one bus became, and two bus became, you heard the story before. And he continued to grow his, 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 his fleet. And then he became like the, one, the number one transporter in Kenya. Then he decided to go into oil refinery. This is from Rags to Riches. And his wealth keeps increasing and increasing and increasing. One day, he was walking in the street, and, one of, and he saw one of the homeless guys on the street. And they tried to rob him. And then he got an idea. What, what do you think the idea he had? After running away, of course, because they tried to rob him. But he then decided that he, he took the homeless, brought him to his home, and presented to his wife and said, I have this conviction that I have to help the homeless because I was once homeless. And now I have to reach out and I have to help them. You think his wife was happy? No? no? no. So imagine a nice mansion now has all, so he, st it, he, he, he brought like 10 kids, and then 10 kids became 20 kids, and 20 kids became, it keeps going up. He gave up his children's room and sent them to boarding school and let the kids stay in his home. What did his wife do? You think she left? No, she helped raise the little ones. He then came to his family one day and said, listen, God has spoken to me. I know what to do now. You know all these buses I have? You know all the cars I have? All the companies I have? I'm going to sell it all. I've given up my wealth. And I'm going to start an orphanage. Sounds crazy? Yeah. That's what he did. He gave up his wealth and started an orphanage. And now it houses over 2,000 children. And you can see this in a documentary called Mooley on, on Prime. So when you get a chance, M-U-L-L-Y. It's on Amazon Prime. So that's the story. And now we have the questions. All right. You can go into your groups and discuss. Go ahead, Jerry. And I know we started two new groups, so I'll go ahead and pass out the, um, these sheets. Again, how did the story make you feel? Which part stood out the most? And can you relate it to a story from the Bible? All right. So talk with your group. Come in. Gather together, discuss for a few. All right, remember, it is a group activity, so get in a little closer. How many minutes, um, Elton? All right, so the last 30 seconds.
<laughs> All right, 10 seconds. Three, two, one. All right, we'll start off with group one. All right, so a story that we came up with from the Bible that would reflect Mr. Mooley would be Joseph. He was abandoned by his family, but then he became wealthy, and he was able to help his brothers in time of need. So that's what we came up with, group. I don't know if you all heard when I was talking earlier, but that's what we came up with. Thank you. So the story, I always put myself in the shoes of the wife. You know, I, I think of, you know, we think of material things and how it affects us and how fast would we give up our comfort. And, you know, I, I wasn't raised rich, so I would probably do the same to give up. But somebody who was raised in opulence probably wouldn't want to, you know, immediately give it up. But I, I put myself in her shoes and I would do the same and help. Our kids would be fine off because they're growing up and just bring more kids in, so. I like that, but as we um, hear from other people, let's think about this. In today's day and age, I don't remember exactly when this story happened, but we know it, um, it happened in Africa. Yeah. In today's day and age, how open will you be to accept strangers in your house? All right? Group number two. Group number two. Who's the representative here? I think group number two wants us to come back to them. Oh, we do? Oh, sorry. I apologize. Okay, good morning, happy Sabbath. So we, we also talked about Joseph, but we also talked about Moses because Moses was left in the river. He was just put in the river, abandoned by his family. Even though it was God's will, it was God's will for him to go through that, but he did, and he wound up the prince of Egypt. And the story, to me, it's, a, it's twofold. It's a, it's, if you trust, anything can happen. That young man did not give up. He did what he had to do to survive, which is in this day and time, you do, you have to do what you have to do to survive. But he kept going, he kept going. Because if he didn't keep going, that one taxi wouldn't have became two, nor would have that bus became a fleet, nor would he have been able to put himself in position to be able to help others. So that's what I think. I think that when I do things I wanna do, do things that's gonna prosper me so that I can prosper someone else. Amen. Amen. That was excellent, guys. So we're on our last minute and a half, so we'll hear from these two groups um, quickly. What we did was we went back to the beginning when he went to the church. So we're going to bring it home to you. Church should have accepted him regardless. And our churches today do not accept everybody. We have who we want and who we don't want. Now, he could have stayed if they accepted him and prospered the same way for the hope and the name of the church so the church can be built up. But that's what we do. We choose who we want to come into our church. We knock them out before they even get their one the other foot in the door. So we said the church. So we didn't go to the Bible. We talked about home, the church. And we will continue a little longer by just giving you an everyday scenario. There was this person who was going from church to church trying to find somewhere. And it goes like this. Well, wife. I found a model church, and I worship there today. It make me think of good old times before my head was gray. The meeting house was finer built than they were years ago. But then I found when I went in, it was not built for a show. The sexton did not set me down away back by the door. He knew that I was old and deaf and saw that I was poor. You know where he got the seat? Right up in front there. And when he heard the choir sing, he thought it was the angelic choir from heaven. 
So I pray to God that today, the story that you are trying to portray, that we, in our time now, <coughs> will do as that old man who was trying to find a church. All right, because we're about we're out of time. All right, briefly. Okay. The first, the verses you gave us fit this perfectly. Oh. Psalms one four six nine, that say the Lord watches over foreigners, and sustain the fatherless and the widows. Amen. So that's for the little boy. Yeah. The next said, when you grew up, whatever you do. Work at it with all your heart Amen. as working for the Lord and not for the human master. Amen. Amen. One, thing with, one thing we do know for sure is that God will, will be done, right? All right. Amen. I want to thank everyone very much for the participation. It was a lovely program. I want to thank my planning team. Thanks to the musician, and thank you most of all. We wouldn't have Sabbath school without you guys. So continue to believe in the promise, and let's pray. Dear Lord in heaven, we are in a world, O oh Lord, where times are hard, and it's not easy. But, O oh Lord, we're grateful that you were with us in the past, and you're with us now, and you'll be with us in the future. So we ask that you cover each and every one of us, O oh Lord. May we make a difference, not just in our homes, O oh Lord, but outside of our homes, and draw others closer to you. We pray in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful Sabbath, everyone. We want to thank New England South Federation for giving us a wonderful Sabbath school this morning. See what happened when you come out early enough for Sabbath school, you can be filled. So in keeping with our New England South Youth Federation week of prayer, Today is the big day for the end of that week celebration. We will have divine service, lunch to follow. Also have AYM, they'll give you more later on. We have outreach project and there will be a social for everyone tonight. On the back of your bulletin, we have announcements. Um, I will emphasize them for you. Men's breakfast and discussion, men. It is good to come together because iron sharpens iron. So come on out tomorrow. Um, April 7th, 9.15 a.m. Be on time for the men's fellowship breakfast and discussion. Mount Zion Garden, Garden Angels, their Pathfinder clothes drive is continuing from now until the 17th. So you have your old clothes. It's spring cleaning time. Clean out your closets and bring some clothes and bring it to the Pathfinder directors over here. Uh, Women's Ministry, we have our third annual, and I say we because I'm a part of the wonderful ministry. We have our third annual um, tea party. So ladies, come on out in your spring attire. Don't wear black like I love to wear black. Come on in some spring colors. Come, let's gather together. Bring a friend, and we will fellowship like the men are fellowshipping tomorrow. We will fellowship on the 21st from 1 to 3. Come on out. Thank you. Thank you. I pray that you'll be blessed. Be a blessing to someone. Yes, Katanya? Katanya, have one more announcement. And as we fellowship today, please bring a cheer. Give a smile to someone. Smile next to the person that's sitting next to you. Smile and give your face a rest. Happy Sabbath, everyone. So next um, Sabbath at AY, we'll be having the part two of the health seminar that we had, the reset. So we're asking everyone to come out and participate and to learn AY about five yet. So coming out about five next week, we'll continue with our health discussion. Health is wealth, as we already know. So again, be a blessing to someone, smile, cheer someone along, and have a wonderful, blessed Sabbath day. Again, I'm one of your clerks, Akashas. If you have announcements, bring it to me or one of our team members. We'll be happy to bring them to you. Be blessed. Thank you.
morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Check, check, check. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. We are live here from at Mount Zion. At Mount Zion for the Youth Week of Prayer. Yes, we're finally here in person after being online every night this week. The young people have been ministering to us and bringing us the word of God. And we are so happy to be in the house of the Lord together. Amen. Amen. So what's, Speak, going, on? what's going on today? What's going on today? Today we have, today we have the Youth Week of Prayer. Mm -hmm here at Mount Zion, mm -hmm. and the divine worship here is going to be spectacular. Is it? What's after divine hour? We have an outreach pro outreach in the community that's going to be here in Hamden, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. More information about that, we're going to Meadow Mills this afternoon to provide some aid and assistance to our community, because that's what it's all about, right? Yeah, that's true. What, what else are we doing? I think even before that, I think we're having lunch here today. We are having lunch. That good old vegan, vegetarian, <laughs> <laughs> lovely meal. And then at 5 o'clock, we're having our senior youth leadership ceremony. Okay, what does that entail? It's a ceremony. They've been in this program for a year, and they're finally getting recognized and bringing their program to completion. Okay. Five. And then after 5, Jaquan is when the real fun begins. The real fun. We're having a social here at Mount Zion directly after that ceremony. Are you going to come? I'll show up. You I'll have be your here. basketball shorts? I do. You have your sneakers ready? Yeah. Okay. And We're going to close out the Sabbath together with fun and, and more fellowship. Okay. So please, we are getting ready right now to start our divine ceremony or divine hour. Um, we have an awesome pastor bringing us the word today. We have a program with all of the youth from the Federation um, just bringing, bringing God's, God's word to the entire conference here at Mount Zion. As you can see now, oh, I don't know if they can see, but the church is beginning to get packed. It and is. I'm just super excited yeah. for the service today. What about you? I'm, I'm really excited. We have people singing from different churches. Mm -hmm. We have a guest pastor coming in. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're doing the welcome. I am doing the welcome. <laughs> oh, wow. And it's just, there's enough space for the amount of people that's coming. Is there? I think so. I Honestly. Think we might have to get a few more chairs from the back. What do you think? <laughs> might have to. But we do want to tell the online viewers that, hey, this, this right here is for you. We're here to encourage you and let you know what's going on from here. If you're not here, if you weren't able to make it. So yeah, all right, as we begin service, uh, we will see you after, right here at the same spot to recap our service. So be here, please stay with us, uh, enjoy our service, and happy Sabbath. Praise the Lord, everyone. Come on, praise the Lord, everyone. So before we get into our divine service, we just want to enter a moment of praise and worship, if that's all right with you. Amen. to keep me never 
forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Sing, I love, I love you forever. It's a simple song. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love, I love you forever. I love you forever. Sing to a friend forever. To the God who is and is to come. Sing, I love forever. I love you. I love you forever.
let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Sing, let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. unto Jehovah, all ye land. Serve Jehovah with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that Jehovah, he is God. It is he that has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks unto him and bless his name. For Jehovah is good, his loving kindness endureth forever, and his faithfulness into all generations. Amen. bow your heads as we seek God in prayer. Our Father and our God, Lord, what an awesome privilege to come in to this house of worship. Lord, we seek your presence in this place today. And we ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that your presence my tabernacle among us. Lord, we claim the promise, for we have gathered in your name that your presence will be in our midst. And as we worship, Lord, we pray that we might truly sense your spirit in our midst and that we might be transformed today. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
please stand for our opening hymn, which is hymn number 590, Trust and Obey. That is hymn number 590, Trust and Obey. Good morning, happy Sabbath, church. You all look amazing. So my name is Cameron Holness, and I'm the AY leader here at Mount Zion. And I just want to say that we are so glad to have you here worshiping with us as we bring our youth week of prayer to a close. The youth have been online every night ministering to us and bringing us the word of God. And now finally, we are here in person, and we do have a full day ahead of us. So after Divine Hour, lunch will be served, so please stay and join us in the fellowship hall for some lunch. And also this afternoon, there will be an outreach program where we'll be going into the community and providing to those in need. So if you are interested in participating in that, see me or your AY leader for more information. And then at 5 p.m. here in the sanctuary, we'll be having our senior youth leadership ceremony. So please join if you can. And directly after that, yes, there's more. We will be having a social to close out the Sabbath with more fun and fellowship. So we hope you came prepared to have an amazing and full day of worship with us. So on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Oliver Archer, and the entire Mount Zion family, thank you for being here, and thank you for tuning in if you're online, for worshiping with us in support of our youth. And we hope you have a blessed Sabbath. And if our praise team could sing our welcome song, Smile Everybody Smile, so we can greet each other in Jesus' name. Have a happy Sabbath. Bye. 
everybody smile Smile, everybody smile Everybody smile, everybody smile Everybody smile, everybody smile Everybody smile, everybody smile Everybody smile Let us breathe, let us breathe Somebody in Jesus' name everybody oh, oh, oh we can do better than that praise the lord everybody oh i'm still not hearing you praise the lord everybody oh i'm gonna give you a pass on that one i don't know i don't know i don't know it is good to be in the house of god one more time for those who are who are new to our congregation uh, my name happens to be Pastor Oliver Archer. I am the proud, privileged pastor right here at the Mount Zion Seventh-day Adventist Church. It is good to be in God's house today. What do you say? Oh, I, I think about the psalmist. And the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I have a few things to share with you today. We have a full worship experience for you today. Uh, however, uh, my partner in ministry, my brother, um, the pastor of the Omega Seventh-day Adventist Church and uh, also the Norwalk Seventh-day Adventist Church is here today. He has a special announcement. I'm going to invite him to come to the platform right now and just share a little bit. This is our, our very own Ricardo Alexander. Bishop, speak to the folk. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm here representing the lower part of the New England South uh, uh, area um, from New Haven to Stamford. And I want you to know that the pastors and all of the churches are standing with you, New England South Youth Federation. In fact, we have partnered with the Youth Federation, and I think there's a flyer that will come up. We have partnered with the Youth Federation to facilitate a singles day of worship and mingle. What did I say? A singles day of worship and mingle. The reality is church that many of our young people and others have been praying. They have been seeking the Lord, wanting and desiring to find someone to be a life partner, someone that loves Jesus, someone that is a fellow 
Seventh Day Adventist Church. And we are happy to announce that for the first time, all of our churches will combine to have and facilitate facilitate a day for our singles. This will be at Omega Seventh-day Adventist Church on the first Sabbath of May, May 4th. And it means that all of our singles from all of the different churches will converge to come together to worship and to mingle. The service, I will tell you from up front, it will be different. I was in the planning session this week with the New England South Federation and everything in the, in the service you shall expect to be different. For example, instead of just regularly welcoming, you know, greeting each one, we are going to allow different people to meet someone, to find out something, at least four or five things about somebody new, and they'll be able to report on the different people that they're meeting. Are, are, are you with me? Instead of just a regular intercessory prayer, we would invite everyone to find someone else, find a partner and pray with them. Presumably, you should be able to meet somebody on that day by the, day, by the time the day is done. Amen? Amen. And then there will be a full day. There will be an afternoon program um, and, 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 and lunch and everything will be provided. But we just want you to know that we take the concerns of our singles seriously. And this is not just for single young people. We know that we have middle aged we have older single people. We know we have single parents who are still single. And so this day is for everyone that's single. Amen? We believe in miracles. Amen? And so May 4th, everyone singles and not at Omega Seventh-day Adventist Church. And, and, and there's a running joke among the pastors. If you meet someone on that day and you end up getting married, we would pay for it. Mercy, mercy. That's not a promise. It's a hope. It's a hope. Praise the Lord. Pastor, Pastor Archer will fill in the details. Fill in the details. Don't, don't let another preacher come to the pulpit, I tell you. Prophecy, prophecy is being fulfilled. I, I just want to um, make mention we have each one of you as we had our uh, welcome. Each one of you is a very special individual, but I just want to make note, uh, we have uh, State Senator Harren Gaston here today. Uh, state Senator is right there. Thank you for uh, your service to our great state, and thank you for coming to worship with us today. Um, I asked him if he, I'm not sure if he's a politician, I asked him if he was going to come and say a word. He said, I just came to worship. Okay. Have mercy. I think I like leaders like that, yeah. leaders who want to worship. <laughs> I have a few things to just share, and then I'm going to go sit down. So um, first thing I want to just mention, uh, this is something that has been brought up in other um, subcommittees and groups, and our, our deacons are concerned, our ushers are concerned, and parents, you should be concerned as well. Today we have a number of individuals in our church who are new to our church, and right here is where we worship. This area of the church uh, we consider a sacred area, a place of sanctuary where we come to worship God. Now, uh, you know that this building is a very sprawling and big building, a lot of room for children and young people to run and, and to just use their God-given energy. It's God-given, amen? And we want to just remind parents and uh, announce to young people that um, at the end of the service, when we leave this place and go to the fellowship hall where we're going to eat, we're going to close off these doors because we don't want young people and children running in and around this sanctuary. Is that all right? We just want to keep this a sacred area. And we want to ask parents to help us. Amen? So parents, uh, can you keep your eyes on your, your, on your small children? Is that all right? Can we do a little old-fashioned thing in this place? We, we want to make sure that everyone is safe and our sanctuary is uh, kept in order. And so we just encourage us to work together. So, so when, when a deacon or a deaconess uh, may speak to a young person and ask them to stop running a horseplay, it, it's, it's, it's done in love. Amen? 
It's not done it, with any malice. We just want to make sure things are safe in this sanctuary. It's a big building, and we want to keep people safe. So let's ask our, our children to stay in areas where adults can see them and uh, stay where uh, we can make sure that everyone is safe. Is that all right? Amen. And if you're, if you're new to our congregation and you want to just uh, run and, you know, as a young person, you might, whoa, this is a big place. Uh, we want to ask you just to keep in mind, stay close to that adult who brought you here. Stay close to that parent, that guardian, and we, we will be mindful to help you in that endeavor. I also want to just remind you that our Pathfinders, our young people, are c collecting clothes. There's a clothes drive that's going to end on the 17th of April. And you might have some clothing. We're not looking for stuff that you don't want to wear. Amen? This is not dump, dump the clothes you're trying to get rid of. <laughs> these, these are clothing that maybe don't fit you any longer but are very well kept, and that might be a blessing to somebody else. And if you have something that you can share, please uh, bring them by. We're raising money because the Pathfinders are going to the International Camporee in Gillette, Wyoming this summer. And then I want to also make mention there are great things happening this weekend. Our men's ministry has a men's breakfast and discussion tomorrow. Amen? Menu in the house? Amen. 9.45, let's meet together. God has something in store for our men. I want to mention we're going to start something, um, something old. We're going to restart it again. We have a Sabbath afternoon Bible study. We have a Sabbath afternoon Bible study, and it's starting this first Sabbath of this quarter. Someone tell you a little bit about it. I don't have time to tell you everything, but you want to be here. Uh, we want to set it up so that people who, who, who are not here can still be a part of it online, but it's also going to be in person. The folk who are in person will have chances to ask questions and dialogue. And uh, so we, we're doing some things, hopefully, to meet some needs. But um, here, here is the topic for this afternoon, one hour at 4 o'clock, one hour before AY, we're going to have a uh, Sabbath afternoon Bible study. Here is the topic for this quarter. You ready? Here it is. Why the sanctuary matters now more than ever. Oh, I thought I'd get an amen. Why the heavenly sanctuary matters now more than ever. Let me give you some of the, the topics. Uh, today we're going to discuss what does the Bible say about Israel? What does the Bible say about Israel? There's so much. Today, you, if you are even unclear, lots of talk about Israel right now in the news. Does the Bible have something to say about Israel? And then um, the next topic, does the, does the Bible prophesy that the temple will be rebuilt in modern Israel? We're going to find out what the Bible says. And then after that, is there a real temple in heaven? Is there a real temple in heaven? Now, now, for many of you, this might be review, but there's things here that you can benefit from. Let me give you the next three, and then I'll say, I won't give you all of them, but we have topics for every Sabbath this quarter. The next three are these, uh, 1844 and me. Here's a subtitle. 1844 and me. Should Adventists be ashamed of the 1844 doctrine? 1844 and America. That's the next one. Is salvation through faith in Jesus enough? And then the last one, um, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, 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 I misstate that. The, the 1844 in America is simply this, Christian nationalism and the end times. Christian nationalism and the end time. And then 1844 and salvation is salvation in and through faith in Jesus enough. So those are the first six. And really, we have a topic for every uh, Sabbath this quarter, but it may go into next quarter. Well, I don't know if we'll be able to finish today. So you can understand people might have questions. But come, I believe it's going to be dynamic and powerful. So just letting you know, that starts today at 4 p.m. Come, if, you're stay, if you stay for the fellowship meal, just stay for the Bible study. Or 
Um, you may be able to, to connect online. We're trying to set that up so that there'll be in person and online as well. Let me leave you with a few prayer concerns and I'm gonna sit down. Uh, let's continue to pray for what's going on in the Holy Land. Let's continue to pray for what's going on in the Holy Land. And then um, we got word from a son of Zion. Kelvin Deere said that his sister, Giselle, she had a stroke this week. She's all right. She hasn't passed, but she's all right. She's, she's convalescing in the Gaylord Rehabilitation Center. Please keep the family in prayer. Those who know her, uh, please reach out. Then we had two deaths this week. Um, Maureen Davis lost her brother this week. Please keep the family in prayer. Many of you remember she lost her mother just recently, and now she's lost a brother, her eldest brother. And then Elder Mortimer Brown, he also lost his brother this week as well. So keep the family in prayer. Um, contact those individuals for more information about the funerals and all the other proceedings. I want to remind you that a church that prays together, stays together, and has power with God together. And so I want to encourage each and every one of you to join with us uh, every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. for a prayer meeting. 7 p.m. for a prayer meeting. Let's join together and pray. Well, I want to sit down now. I want to encourage you today to be prepared for a blessing. God bless each one of you as we worship our Savior, our King, in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord, everyone. God is good all the time. God is good. Is on the New England South Youth Federation and Mount Zion have a lot of history. We've done many events together, the 100th anniversary, um, banquets and stuff. So we really appreciate this church always opening your arms and your doors for the youth of this area to come and worship and to be a part. So thank you, Mount Zion. Thank you, Pastor Archer, and for your openness and your hospitality. And thank you. There's a lot of people I got to thank, but I wanna, I'll probably do it at the end of the day as far as with regards to Mount Zion and our federation. But the purpose why we're here we're concluding our Youth Week of Prayer, right? I don't know for those that have watched all week, but our youth and young adults have done a wonderful job in sharing the Word of God. We didn't give them any script. We just told them that the theme is Believe the Promise, and they took it, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, they came and delivered, and God is good. So we have a bright future here in New England South for our youth and young adults. Um, today we have a lot in store, like Sakasha mentioned earlier before, as we, we, we're doing the whole day, so we did Sabbath school, obviously, doing divine worship. And right after divine worship, or right be, if divine worship is long, then right before it ends, we actually have an outreach. We have Candace, if you could come up for a quick minute. So we have an outreach that um, we're going to go to one of the local nursing homes and minister to them, and also a youth center. We have gifts and stuff that we want to give them. So I'll let Candace just share for a minute. She's our compassion leader for the New England South Youth Federation. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Woo! You guys look really, really good. Anyway, letting you guys know what the New England South Youth Federation will be doing this afternoon directly after um, Divine Worship. In fact, we're beginning at 2 p.m. We will be meeting at the, I believe it's called the New Meadows Nursing Home. Um, Cameron, if you're around, you can correct me. <laughs> Meadow, Meadow Mills. Meadow Mills Nursing Home, and that's like about two minutes down the street. It's on Leader Hill Drive. I believe it's 133 Leader Hill Drive, so we're all supposed to be familiar with where it is. We will be meeting up there at approximately 155 before we enter the building so that we can, you know, show our acts of love and compassion to those in this community. Okay, so we look forward. If you would so like to join us, please reach out to me or to Cameron, we'd love to give you directions as to how to come and to participate with us. Thank you. Thank you, Candice. Um, also, later on today at 5 o'clock, the Northeastern Conference Youth Department is coming here. So Dr. Olivier, the Assistant Youth Director for the North American Division, he's going to be here. So we're actually going to honor our senior youth um, participants that took the course all year, New England South and also from all over. So. Youth and young adults and attendees from Boston will be here, New York, so 5 p.m. that will happen. Now, along with 
all the other things that we do, something that we are very serious about is Bible study. If I know the pastor mentioned it, and we want to make sure that the best that we can under, by God's grace, that every youth and young adult will be saved in this kingdom. And we know that Bible study has a lot to do with that. So we have a young adult leader here, our new young adult leader on fire for the Lord, Kyle Whittingham. And he's going to talk about the Bible study that we've started past um, month or a couple of weeks. Or so. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, recently, we have started, uh, as you said, sorry. Uh, every two weeks, we were having young adult Bible studies online. But to be fair, it hasn't seemed to reach many as yet. The hope is that after today, we'll see some of these faces join on the Zoom. But we came up with a creative idea of bringing the Bible study on the road. So what we actually want to do is that go to each and every church in the Federation, one, one Sabbath or one Friday, whichever day works best for that church, have a Bible study there with that church, stream it and post it on the YouTube. And then that way, even if you're not able to travel to a, whether it be Shiloh, Mount Zion, Omega, Shalom, whichever church it is, you can tune in on the live stream and still watch it. But this way, we know that each church is involved, and each church will have their chance to participate in a Bible study, and we will take it there, and we'll plan to find more about God, learn more about God, because it's more important now than ever. So in the coming weeks, we'll have more information. We'll keep talking with the AY leaders, and we put together a schedule, and then Sooner or later, Bible study will be coming to your church. So we ask that you put this initiative in your prayers as we continue to develop and win souls for the kingdom. So our youth are on fire, and to God's glory for that. So we're just asking you, amen, amen, amen. So we're just asking you just to keep us in prayer as we continue to minister our youth and young adults. You know, pray for us that the Lord will continue to give us ideas and his spirit to just minister to their needs. We really want them to be saved. We want them to be active in our church. So we want our youth to be, um, we want to hear well done, that good and faithful servant from the Father. I just want to highlight our speakers. If you, I'm going to call out your names if you're here. I'm asking you to please stand. All right, so as you know, this week we had our youth week of prayer, and we had many youth and young adults from the various churches. So I'm going to, hopefully they're all here today, but our first Sunday night, it was Shazani Thompson from the Hope SDA Church. Is he here, Shazani? Are you here? Okay, all right. Well, praise God. I'm sure he'll watch this online. All right, so on Monday night, we had Impilo Norris from here. He represented Mount Zion. I know he's in Baltimore right now, but he represented Mount Zion very well, Impilo Norris. On Tuesday, we had Alex Amon from the Shiloh SDA Church. Alex, are you here? And I spoke to him this morning. He said he's going to try to come. All right. On Wednesday, we had our youngest preacher from the Faith SA Church with his Xavier Vassil. Xavier Vassil, nine years old. All right. On Thursday, we had our only female preacher, only female preacher, and she did an awesome job. Tanaje Foster. There she is, everybody. And on Friday last night, we, we had a speaker from the Bridgeport SDA Church, another young man, right, second youngest, and he is Liam Harris. Is Liam Harris here. It's good. You know, these youth came and they spoke God's word and to God's regard. So we do have a token of appreciation that we'll give you all in the, in the future. But thank you for your willingness, and I want to thank everybody, all the churches that took part in creating their videos, preliminaries, and everything. I know it's a lot of work, and we appreciate what you did. And at the end of the day, um, you get a star in your crown for what you have done for Christ. So what we do for Christ will last. All right, we'll continue the service, and let's continue to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, everyone. Oh, wow. 
girls. Let's do that again. Good morning, boys and girls. All right. Uh, all right. How is everyone Sabbath? Good? Good? Yes. Great. Great. So I have the privilege of doing the uh, children's story today. And today's children's story centers around this item that's in my hand. Can somebody tell me what this is that they see in my hand? A phone. Yes, a phone or a telephone. I'll turn around so you guys can see it as well. So this is a telephone. Uh, so, and what are some things a telephone can be used for? Calling people. Yes, anything else? Yes, so the main purpose of a telephone is to call somebody when you want to get in contact with them, when you want to reach them, when you want to call them up and, sit and tell them all the things you want to tell them. So we're going to start this story off, but I'm going to need some help. Who would like to hold the telephone? Okay, I will have, yeah, you're very excited. So I'll have you hold the telephone. And who wants to answer the telephone? Okay, I'll have you. So come on up, stand up. Okay, so you could be the little table that holds the phone. All right, and then when I say ring, ring, you're gonna answer the phone, all right? And I also need additional help from people here. So happy Sabbath. All right, so there's a little bit of singing in this uh, story and um, just please sing along with me. I'm very shy with singing, so if you could sing, if you know the song, sing along, all right, everybody? All right, so. Here's the story. So the story is about a little girl, and she came home from school, and she was so sad. She had a rough day at school. Has anybody had a rough day at school before? Yeah. So the, so the little girl had so much going on. She had so much schoolwork and chores and school drama, all these things, and she felt a burden on her shoulders. And she was like, I need to talk to somebody about this. So, so she thought to herself, who can I call when I'm in need like this? So she said, I know. My grandma, she always answers the call her phone, and she always makes me feel better. And then she picked up the phone and began to dial the number. Oh, yeah, we pick up the phone, actually. <laughs> you can pick up the phone. And then she began to dial the phone number of her grandma, ring, 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 ring. And her grandma answered. And the little girl said, hi, grandma. And the, little gra and the grandma said, hello, my grandchild. How are you doing? <laughs> well, grandma, I had a rough day at school, the girl began. But her grandma interrupted her and said, oh, I would love to hear about it, but I don't have any minutes left on my phone. Goodbye. And then, boom, the line went silent. And then she was so sad again, but the little girl didn't lose hope. So then she decided, all right, I'm going to call my best friend. That's another person that always listens to what the things that I need. And then she picked up the phone again, and then she began to dial her best friend's number. Ring, ring 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 and the best friend answered and she said hey best friend the little girl said when she answered I had such a rough day and and before she could even finish the best friend cut her off and say hey I would love to talk about you but I'm far too busy to listen to your problems bye and then she hung up the phone and the little and the line went silent but the little girl did not give up she then decided, all right, those people didn't answer, all right, they, didn't, they couldn't have time for me. I'm now going to call my older sister. She always knows what to do. She always listens to me when I need something. So she picked up the phone again, then she dialed the number, ring, and then dialed the number, and then she, it went ring, 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 and the sister answered and said, hello, my little sister. And the little girl was so happy. She was like, oh, I am so glad that you answered. I, but before the little girl could even finish, the sister cut her off. And she said, I can't really hear you. The cell reception is bad. I will have to call you back later. And the line went silent. And then she hung up the phone. Hung up the phone. All right. 
and the poor little girl had no one else to call, and she felt even sadder than she was originally. Now, the mother who walked in overheard how sad she was and said, I know of a friend you haven't tried. Who, the little girl said, have you tried talking to Jesus? No, tell me more about him. Well, it might be best if I sang about him. So remember, you're going to sing with me, guys, right? All right. <laughs> so unlike the grandma whose main line wasn't working, you can call him up and tell him what you want. And there's a song that goes like this. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. The little girl became a little less skeptical as the mother continued. And unlike your best friend who was too busy for you, there's another song that talks about Jesus being the best friend to have. And the song goes like this. The best friend to have is Jesus. The best friend to have is Jesus. He will help you when you fall. He will answer when you call. Oh, the best friend to have is Jesus. Now the little girl became a little bit more excited well, what if I call Jesus and he can't hear me like my sister? And the mother said, good thing about him is he is always listening. And there's a song that goes like this. God hears me when I pray. God hears me when I pray. Out of all the people. Okay, please sing with me. <laughs> World. God hears me. when I pray. And the little girl said, wow, give me Jesus' no, no phone number so I can call him up. And the mother laughed and said, you don't need a phone to get in contact with Jesus. Just close your eyes and whisper a prayer. Jesus loves to hear all of our problems, our wants, and our needs, and he truly listens. So that's the end of the story. Okay, so we're going to so we're going to collect the offering at this time. Oh, actually, we're going to pray first. Sorry, we're just going to pray first. So can I have two people to pray? I need somebody else to pray. Um, dear Jesus, I, wel I welcome you here in, in your home. Um... I pray for everybody in, in here today for one reason, and that is God. Amen. God is with us all. He, he believes in us any, any possible way. Whenever you are in danger, he um, rescues you. Amen. Amen. All right, we could collect the offering at this time.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Come on, praise the Lord, everyone. Listen, I will not let a rock cry out for me, and I believe you won't let one cry out for you. Praise the Lord, everyone. So this is praise and worship, and with praise and worship, it's a participation act. We can all participate in worship. So this song is called I'll Praise You, Lord. You can sing it with us if you know it. So the song says, I'll praise you, Lord, with all my soul, with all my soul. I'll praise you, Lord. I praise with my mouth. I praise with my life. Everything I do, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord, with all my soul, with all my soul. I'll praise you, Lord. I praise with my mouth, I praise with my life, everything I do, everything I do, I'll praise you, Lord, I praise you, Lord, with all my soul, with all my soul, I praise you, Lord, I praise with my mouth, with my life, everything I do, everything I do, I'll praise you, Lord.
so this next song this next song is called Jesus and it may be unfamiliar with some of you but the verse of the song says there is a name that I love to call it stands alone and it conquers all and we and with every chain for every wall will be released and it will have to fall so if you believe that and if you catch on to the song I just want you to sing it along with us because there is power in the name of Jesus the name of Jesus causes demons to tremble the name of Jesus can heal the sick the name of Jesus can heal the blind cause the lame to walk the mute to speak Ooh, the name of Jesus has resurrection power through his blood we are healed through his stripes we are healed is a name I love to call it stands alone and conquers all and every chain and every wall will be released and have to fall there is a name I love to call It stands alone It conquers all And every chain And every wall Will be released And have to fall There is
we call your name thy precious name it heals the sick and heals the lame we call your name for everyone and Jericho will have to fall we call your name for everyone and Jericho will have to fall we call your name for everyone and Jericho will have to fall we call your name for everyone and your Jericho is gonna have to fall Resurrection power, Jesus. it's resurrection power, Jesus. is a time for us to enter into a moment of prayer hallelujah and the beauty about prayer is that you can lay your burdens at the altar and you can lay it before the lord hallelujah so we're going to ask the lord to create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us so that we may worship him hallelujah Please. 
us bow our heads for prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for today and thank you for bringing us to this place of worship safely. We acknowledge that all our lives you have been faithful. All our lives you have been so good. With every breath that we are able, we will sing of your goodness and your mercy and your grace. Thank you for this youth day and for blessing us in all of our ministries and thank you for our family that support. Thank you for all of the leaders in the Federation and all around the conference. Thank you for blessing Cecil and his leadership and thank you for all that he does and using him in many ways. We pray for the sick and suffering members and those that have lost family members, be with them and comfort them. And we know that you are the bomb in Gilead. You can heal every sick person you are the resurrection and life. And thank you for your resurrection, how on that late Friday night, you died only for one reason. And that is to wash away all our sins. And then you stayed in the tomb on Sabbath, but early Sunday morning, you arose from the grave and <clears throat> life would not be the same if you stayed dead. Christianity would not make any sense. And we wouldn't be here today. And because you live, we can face tomorrow. Because you live, all fear is gone. And because we know that you hold the future, life is worth a living just because you live. You can wash away all our sins and cleanse us to be whole again because your grace and your mercy is greater than all of our sins. Not one, not two, not three, but all of our sins. And what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us hold again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is the flow that makes us whiter than snow. No other fount I know. That's nothing but the blood of Jesus. And indeed, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunged beneath that flood and lose all their guilty stains. And we know that you are our light and our salvation. Whom shall I fear? You are the joy and the strength of our lives. Whom shall I be afraid? And remind us that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up and fly on an eagle's wings. They shall walk and not faint, and they shall run and not be weary. And help us to know that. And bless our speaker for today, Pastor Javon White, and bless him as he preaches today and speak every word through him and help him to use your words that you expect him to use. Thank you for blessing all of the speakers who spoke this week and thank you for blessing them and helping them to remember your words. 
Help us to all receive a blessing today and change people and let the power go through them. Help us to be blessed today and throughout the service, through every song that is sung, every scripture that is read, and every word that is spoken. Because you are the same God that can do it. We can't do it ourselves, but you can do it. Because you're the same God. You're the same God that woke us up this morning. You're the same God that started us on our way. You're the same God that died for all our sins and washed all our sins away. You are the same God that rested on Sabbath and worked all six days. Help us to remember the Sabbath day and six days shall all labor. And please bless the service and thank you for all the youth who is participating and being involved. And I pray for every member in the congregation. And as we have our social tonight, please bless us and bless all of our conference leaders who are coming in the evening also. Thank you for everything you do. In this I pray, in your name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Cast me not, cast me not away from thy presence. Sabbath again, church. I invite the deacons to, come for, deacons to come forward. As you prepare to give your offering today, remember that your gift does not simply disappear into a collection basket. Instead, it is entrusted to God and used for his purposes. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8 says, one of the most common tithe and offering verses we read, and God can bless you abundantly. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Your gift is a seed that will reap a harvest of blessings for you and others. Through your generosity, God can provide for those in need, fund ministries that share his love and accomplish his plans for his people. Consider how your gift can be used to further the kingdom of God and make a difference in the lives of those around you. So don't give grudgingly or out of obligation, but give with joyful hearts, knowing that God will take your gift and use it to bless others. As you give, remember that your gift is not just about meeting a financial need, but about an eternal impact.
Amen, church. Amen. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Let us pray. Different and most righteous, compassionate Father, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for the day that you've blessed us with thus far, dear Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for each and every family represented here, each person that was able to give, and also bless those that weren't able to give, dear Lord. Lord, I ask that you will bless this offering, this tithe, that will continue to the furtherance of your work. Please continue to guide and protect the proceedings of the remainder of this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Please be seated. Test, test. Praise the Lord once again, church. So this is the New England South Mass Choir. So hopefully we'll have, we'll have more singers from the um, the North area, Hey Faith and Charity, but they couldn't make it. But next event we'll have more of them. But this is our Mass Choir. So continue to pray that this choir will grow and continue to minister by his grace. Anthony Davis from the Charity SDA Church, he'll be the one that'll be directing. Calvary, sorry, Calvary SDA Church, he'll be directing this choir.
Praise the Lord, everyone. So, um, at this time, we'll like to, if the Lord impress upon your heart, to give unto the Youth Federation. As you know, the money that we collect will further our ministry to minister to our youth. So at this time, we have a second offering for the youth and young adults of the New and South Federation. So I'm asking the deacons, if you could please come up. Oh, deaconesses. Yeah, deacons and deaconesses. Um, Cash Up and Zell is fine. That's fine. Um, to Craig, can you bring up the, the Cash App information on the screen? appreciate you giving to our youth um, ministry, and I'll just say a prayer for God's blessing and anointing on it. Dear fathers, we want to thank you once again for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Father, for this day that we can worship you. Thank you, Father, for those that gave. Thank you for those that didn't give, and thank you for those that are just always supportive for the youth and young adults. I pray, Lord, that you bless this offering, let it be used to further your ministry, and to bring souls to, closer to you and to glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good afternoon, church. Let's try that again. Good afternoon, church. Much better. Stand with me and turn your Bibles to... Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31. That's Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. We will read together. When you found it, please say amen. Let's begin. Has thou not seen? We'll read it together, church. Let's go. Three, two, one. Has thou not, has thou not heard? 
that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth the power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank you. Please be seated. Justin, we have two vehicles that need to be moved and infinity on BJ59110. And we have a, a Toyota 4Runner, um, BJ04960. So both connect, please. All right, so we have a Toyota 4Runner, BJ04960, and we have an infinity, BJ59110. This group is ministry from the Calvary SDA Church. In the foothills of sorrow, in the valley of fears, you can see doubt off in the distance, and you're about to lose heart right here. But don't ever give in, don't ever give up. God is with you, you'll overcome. Mountain will tell you that you can't make it over. It will try to convince you that it's way too high. Though you feel defeated, know that God keeps his promise. So you tell the mountain. How big your God is Just try to remember All the trials he's brought to you through And there is power Give you strength for the journey The very hour you need it to so Don't be discouraged Never filled you with corn and cry. The mountain will tell you that you can't make it over. 
It will try to convince you that it's way too high. Oh, you feel defeated. Know that God keeps His promise. So you tell the mountain just how big your God is. Now we're getting close to the time. We're going to hear from our special guest, preacher, Pastor Joven White. I'll be giving this an introduction. Pastor Joven White hails from the beautiful island of Jamaica, Yaman, <laughs> and, grew, and grew in the city of Kingston. He's a graduate of the Micro University College, where he earned a diploma in secondary education with an emphasis in logistics. He then received a call for ministry and enrolled at the Northern Caribbean University where he graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Religion and Theology. During his time at NCU, he was integrally involved in music and radio ministry, singing on both the chamber and Shahe choirs director of the ministerial choir, and was one of the first ministerial students to host his own radio program on NCU radio, which were namely Sunset to Sunset and the Healthy and Happy radio shows. He also holds a Master of Arts degree in pastoral counseling with an emphasis in marriage and family counseling from Liberty University in Virginia, USA presently pursuing a PhD in organizational leadership and management from Liberty University. Pastor White has esteemed himself as an international evangelist, counselor, gospel recording artist, and a musician who has preached and administered in many evangelistic campaigns across Jamaica and internationally in the USA. In USA, Canada, United Kingdom, Turks and Caicos, Brazil, and the Cayman Islands. To date, the Lord has blessed his ministry with over 1,000 souls. Praise God for that. He is married to the lovely Dr. Kahila Jones White, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist in the states of Florida and New Jersey. Kahila is also a conflict resolution expert, certified Supreme Court family med mediator, and CEO and founder of Platinum Life Counseling. God has blessed their union with an adorable and beautiful daughter, Joanna Joy White, AKA Jojo, who's now just 19, now just 15 months old. Going on 19? Oh, 19 months, okay. 19 months old. Pastor White and his wife are a dynamic duo team that share in the ministry of counseling youth and family life ministries. They have done many programs and seminars internationally on television programs, radio stations, and in churches. This dynamic couple seeks to help families, singles, couples, and young people have healthy and happy relationships. 
Pastor White presently serves as a senior pastor for the Community Seven-Day Adventist Church in Inglewood, New Jersey. His personal philosophy is, anything for Jesus, let me do. So after the New England South Mass Choir, you will hear Pastor Joven White.
Will the church say amen? Will the church say praise the Lord? If you're excited to be in God's presence, wave your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a joy it is to be one more time in the presence of the Lord. What do you say? It is a joy to be here. I'm grateful and thankful for the leadership of your pastor. Come on, put your hands together for the man of God, the prophet of this house, and his lovely wife, and um, all the leaders and officers of this great church uh, for granting me this awesome privilege of preaching the word of God in this illustrious edifice of praise. Won't you just praise God for the young people here from this part of the region? Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, just you can do better than that. I want to praise God for Brother Cecil, where he is. My technician, I was fine. You don't, you don't touch me, all right? <laughs> praise the Lord. I want to say hi, uh, happy Sabbath to Brother Cecil. Where, where is he? He's at, praise God. Put your hands together for the man of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. Now, I must confess, my elder called me and said that they're having lunch now. But we're here to have church. What do you say? Are you really here to have church? Well, I won't be long with you, but we're going to have some good time. What do you say? My, my beautiful and cute delicious wife is here. Y'all heard me. Let me say it again. Let me repeat it so you can tweet it. My beautiful, lest you say something else, and cute, delicious wife. Could you wave your hand? Beautiful lady over there. That's my wife, baby, baby girl there. And that's my baby girl, Jojo. She's actually 21 months. Am I right? 21 months today. Yeah, I was way off. But in June, June, she will be two years old. Come on and say amen. And she's keeping us healthy, Pastor. I don't got to go to any gym right now. She's keeping me very fit. Amen. Y'all who have children know what I'm talking about. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's all stand to our feet as we reverence the reading of God's holy word. You've been sitting for a while. So let's get right to work with the word of God. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 downwards. Just get that PowerPoint ready for me. Could you pass me that? Uh, pointer right over there the pointer yeah Isaiah chapter 40 the pointer there we go poor point there you go Isaiah chapter 40 thank you so much I just realized that Zach is my, my cousin y'all he's my cousin just found out a while ago there are a lot of persons here from Bella's Gate and Blue Hole am I right yeah there's a few jam, jam down yard is here yeah those of you who want to remember you came from country, you're here. Amen. But I found, <laughs> let me get in the word. Isaiah chapter 40, found some family here. We'll talk later. Verses 21 onwards, rather 28 onwards. Good to see Nissa. good to see you. Good to see my good friend. And Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 onwards, my favorite text in the Old Testament. Let's read together. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. The Bible says there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that hath no might. He increaseth in strength. Even the youths will faint and be weary. Young man shall utterly fall, but, somebody say but, they that wait upon the Lord, y'all know it, don't you, shall renew their strength. The Bible says they shall mount up with the wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Bow your heads as we bless this word. Spirit of the living God, won't you fall afresh on me? Take now lips of clay, let them move by the impulse of your love. And so, Lord, as I kneel in front of your people, as Ellen White reminds ministers to kneel in dependence on God, stand one more time in my body, Holy Ghost. Use me now in a meaningful manner. One more time, dispatch angels who excel in strength to take up residence in this place. 
Won't you heal some broken heart today? Won't you set some captive free? May we be careful to give you all the glory and all the praise. May the devil be terrified. May your people be edified. But your name be glorified today. So let the words of her mouth, meditation of her hearts, be found acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Let the church of the Lord say, before you sit, let's wave to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, we don't believe in bad mind here. Come on and say, we don't believe in hate or race. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. That, that neighbor was too boozy. They didn't want to talk with you. So touch your own self and say, self, oh self, I'm too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed. Come on, give God a hand clap. He's worthy to be praised. We're wide awake now. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Grace will always be greater than our sins. In holy pages, this true can be found. A promise to stand on when darkness abounds. Oh, but why never loses and wrong never wins? And grace will always be greater than sin. Grace will always be greater than sin. Calvary has proven its time and again whatever you've done wherever you've been God's grace will always be greater than sin Broken and bruised from the choices you made. Sin has a price, and so often you may. Oh, but Jesus is waiting, new hope is in heaven. And grace will always be greater than sin. Oh, grace will always be greater than sin. Calvary has proven its time and again whatever you've done wherever you've been God's grace will always be greater than sin grace
Whatever you've done, wherever you've been, oh, oh God's grace will always be greater than sin. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Thank you so much, technicians. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Best-selling author Rick Warren in his book, The Purpose Driven Life, on the screen promotes a thought-provoking reality that has always captured my attention. He says, and I quote, it's not about you. The purpose of your life is far more greater than your personal fulfillment, your peace of mind, or even your happiness. These words, my brothers and my sisters, sums up in my estimation the mountaintop moments and the valley excursions we all so frequent in this life. Make no mistake about it, Mount Zion, whether these experiences are good, bad, or indifferent, Warren reminds us of the greater reality that the experiences that we go through in this life is not about us. God in his sovereignty, here it is, has a way of employing the various experiences in our lives to work out his will in us that is far more greater than us. No wonder the Bible says all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. If you're with the preacher, say yes. In other words, don't fuss and fight about the problems you go through in this life because what the devil meant for adversity in your life, God has a way of turning it around for his glory. If you're with me, say praise the Lord. And I don't know what I'm about you, but I, today I want to tell you, if you came through a crazy week of challenges, we had a crazy earthquake. Y'all remember that? I didn't feel it, but y'all felt it? We may have got a crazy week this week, but what the devil meant for adversity in your life, God has a way of turning it around for his glory. And here in this passage of scripture, God seeks to give Israel a promise that through the prophet Isaiah, the children of Israel had been through the Red Sea experience and saw God's providential hand delivering them. But now in their low moment of distress, and despondency, uh, they seem to have spiritual amnesia, forgetting the things that God hath done for them. The children of Israel are now in bondage, and for over 400 years, they endured hardship, horror, and pain, from the wilderness to the promised land, from Jerusalem, and now they're in exile in Babylon. Hence, the prophet of God called Isaiah in the middle of the pandemic experience reminds and reproves them. Here it is of God's promises. Somebody say promises. His divine presence. Somebody say presence. And his purpose for their lives. The prophet Isaiah, can you hear me clearly down there? The prophet Isaiah was sent to help us to understand that despite the perilous problems that they're going through in this life, they must remember, here it is, beloved, that the same God that kept them in times past is the same God that can keep them in times to come. And today, I don't know who I'm talking to going through a difficult season in your life. I'm here to tell you, you may be broken going through a difficult circumstance. But I'm here to remind you that the same God that kept you in 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, and now in this year is the same God that can keep you in ages to come. Will somebody lift up their hands and give God praise? I'm heading somewhere. Bear with the preacher. We're looking at believe the promise. 
So the prophet was asked the question. He was asking rhetorical questions because the children of Israel, thank you so much, that nations, they were in the, the bondage for so long. They were wondering, where is our God? And so he asked the question. Here it is. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faint and not, neither is he weary. There is no searching for his understanding. The prophet Isaiah was simply saying, don't forget, young people, who your God is. I'm going to put some stuff on the screen. Hold on to your seat. Don't leave the preacher yet. Remember the God we serve is Elohim. Somebody say Elohim. I'm trying to remind us about the God who serve. He is Jehovah Nissi, the Lord my banner. He's Jehovah Jireh. No, anybody can testify. He's the Lord your provider. He's Jehovah Shalom, the Lord your peace. Pastor, get to the point. Here it is. The same God who carried the Israelites through the Red Sea is the same God that can carry you through your Red Seas. Will somebody lift up their hands and give God some praise? The same God that fought against the ben Goliath and the Philistines is the same God that can fight your battles in 2024. The same God who showed up in the fiery furnace and the three Hebrew boys came out without a scratch. A preacher says the Ismaiaki and the Creed Cologne and the Versace Cologne was still smelling. Because the God we serve can be an air conditioning unit in the middle of your fire. So when you come out, you can get burned. Come on and say amen. The same God that told you that, that, that doctors say you're not going to make it is the same God that healed your body and uh, saved your soul. Uh, and will somebody say amen? Uh, because when doctors say no, uh, Jesus say yes. I'm trying to help somebody today. I wonder if there's anybody here who can have a flashback moment. Look in the rear view mirror of your life. See where God has carried you from and see where you are today. It's only because, not of you, but because of your God. Will somebody say praise the Lord? You've been through some valleys. You've overcome some mountains. But you've come out singing through it all, through it all. I've learned to trust in in Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to the screen. Here it is. Can I talk to my youth now? My first point is be comforted by his promises. Because the Bible says in verse 29, the God, this God giveth power to the faint. To the what? And to them that have no might, he increases in strength. Here it is. Even the youth will faint and be weary. Young men shall utterly fall. In these last days, can I just talk to my young people for a little bit? And the children of God here, we got to stand firm on the foundations and the promises of God. As people of God, we can be vacillating between the world and the church. You can't be clubbing in the dance hall and singing on the church hall at the same time. You can't be dancing on the outside and want to dance on the inside. Will somebody say praise the Lord? You can't be parting with the devil on Friday night. I want to sing with Jesus on Sabbath. Can I be real with you? You can't be on Facebook book more than in God's book. You can't be Instagramming more than praying. You can't be WhatsApping more than witnessing in these last days. I'm not trying to push you over but I'm not trying to come out of your face either. You got to be anchored in the foundation and your faith with God. You know, my young people said to me, Pastor, you're giving, I came in an outfit and they said, Pastor, you're giving, you're giving. Um, I said, what am I giving? Apparently, that's a, that's a term a term they use, you know. So, so I, I just said, Pastor, you, you, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving. I said, what am I giving? In other words, what, 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 what do I look like? She said, she said Pastor, you, you, you look fly today, man. You look good today. I said, well, okay, praise God. If you can't say amen, just say ouch. I said, praise God. Well, can I tell you? Your Christian life got to be giving consistency in Christianity. Not giving glorified worldliness. Uh-oh. 
These last days, you got to be wrapped up and tied up in with the living God. You got to be lit on Instagram, lit for Jesus on TikTok, lit for Jesus on Snapchat, lit for Jesus on WhatsApp, because everybody's got to know who Jesus is. Can I tell you something? Listen, if you ever check your, your Instagram history, you know about a thing called the algorithm. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? And Instagram is a thing like this. You know, when I check my spirituality, I got to do my, something I check myself. Have you ever checked yourself out to see if you're really talking to God? Can I be real with you today? Amen, somebody? Have you ever really checked yourself? Well, when you look at your Instagram account, there's the algorithm, which actually tells you what do you really watch. And if you check the history of the algorithm... It will tell you where your mind is most times in the week. Are you with me, saints of God? So when I go through my algorithm, I realize what I'm, my mind is mostly on. Y'all not there with me. So in other words, your algorithm tells you who you really are. Tells you where your mind is. I left it in the car. My, my wife... Hit it away from me. But lately, to free my mind, my brother-in-law bought me this Game Boy thing. You use the game console? I'm not a gamer, but I can tell you this. I got so caught up in that thing, I said, no, I got I to gotta hide it. Because I like football. Anybody love soccer here? How so? Come on, someone. I like soccer and football. Yeah, you love, you love it. High five. You see me? Yeah, yeah, you love it. I see that. You love it too much. I see that. And so it's in the car. I forgot to show it. I wanted to show you what it looks like. So, so I, got, I got this thing. I got so caught up to my wife who said, what well, last have you prayed? She, she loved to do that little thing on me in the car. Have mercy for a good wife. If you can't say amen, just say ouch. And so <laughs> when I looked at my algorithm and I looked at my game, I realized that if you're not careful... You find yourself drifting. Y'all not with me. Y'all still with me? You find yourself drifting. And, and, and Instagram is like this. You can be scrolling. Do you, did you ever realize when you're scrolling your Instagram, it never stops. It keeps, it keeps going and going and going. till it never stops. Because that's what the devil wants you to do. As soon as you see something, you keep going to something else. And before you know it, you went on Instagram just to be there for five minutes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He's smiling. He knows what I'm talking about. And you're there now for over an hour. The devil is alive. Some more house, please. The devil is alive. Somebody say amen. My beloved friends, we got to be careful that we guard the avenues of our minds. You got to ensure that you're not addicted to the wrong things. You got to make sure that you're addicted to Jesus. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Friday, and on Sabbath, you come into his presence with thanksgiving. You enter into his courts with praise. Will somebody say amen? I've got to make sure that I'm addicted to spending more time with God. The Bible says even the youth will faint and be weary. The phrase faint and be weary means getting distracted in the Hebrew. It means failing in your spiritual life. My brothers and sisters, it's not the time to be losing our faith when we see earthquakes and tsunamis on the increase. We got to look up to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. Will somebody lift up their hands and praise the Lord? We got to lift up our heads to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord because the church has one foundation. It's Jesus Christ the Lord. Can I preach this? And on Christ the solid rock I will stand. Will somebody say amen? No other ground. Hallelujah. Let me hold back preaching for a bit. Did you know that Ministry Magazine says the church is now suffering from something called psychiatric depression? 
Can I, can I just say this and get out of your way? My second point, psychiatric depression. Even in the church, America is suffering from psychiatric depression. And the church member, we have a lot of sad ventus than glad ventus. Some of y'all just woke up. Pastor, in my 13 years of ministry, and even as a pastor's kid, I put the Adventists into four categories. Sad Ventists, Glad Ventists, Mad Ventists, and Bad Ventists. And I was watching my Instagram thing, Nisa, and a friend of mine sent me something in my Instagram saying, with all the earthquakes that shook in New York City, all the Bad Ventists should be church today. We have sad ventus. Glad, you're, you're a glad ventus. Praise God for you. He said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> glad ventus, sad ventus, and mad ventus. Pastor, be careful of the bad ventus. Nothing you do can be right. Oh, the music is too loud. Oh, the, so, the watch her skirt is too short. Oh, this and that. They are bad ventures and nothing they have is good to edify the body of Christ. Then you have the mad ventures. <laughs> they just laugh and messed up. They all jacked up in this place. And then you have the sad ventures. Can I tell you about them? Nothing the praise team does, doesn't matter how sweet church is, their face is long, long, long of it. Nothing is nice about God. The mere fact that you're six feet above your grave, that's a lot to give God thanks for. Will somebody say amen? There's a roof up above you, a fine place to sleep, shoes on my table, shoes on my feet. Thank you, God, for his blessings. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Will somebody say amen? You come to church with your sad self, sit down in your sad seat with your sad colors, and you want to stop my praise. The devil is a liar. Can I preach this? Uh, we would say in Jamaican vernacular, Caribbean, to give me pass. Uh, let me praise me God uh, because you don't know how many problems uh, I've been through this week. Uh, you don't know how many valleys uh, I've made it through. Uh, the mere fact that I'm here uh, sitting uh, is a testimony uh, of the mercies. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost, uh, and the glory uh, of God. Uh, so let me pass. Uh, let me praise God. It's been too good. Oh, the Jamaican side just came out. Don't worry about it. He's been too good to me. So you got sad ventus. You know those sad ventus? Can I keep on preaching? My time is almost. Can I keep on preaching? Pastor, sister, how you doing? Ah. You know them kind of, those kind of, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard ministering to Caribbeans, you know. We, we're not easy to Pastor, I prayed for you. I don't have a lot of Car I have Caribbeans, but there's not a lot. So praise God, there's a balance. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Pastor, sister, how you doing? <sighs> you know that kind of before that. I'm trying. <laughs> Next Sabbath, sister, how you doing? <sighs> Pastor, why are you so happy? <laughs> Can I keep on going? We're talking about believing in God in your difficult... Sister, how are you doing third Sabbath? Ah, Pastor Roy. Hard times. Every day can be a sad day. Every day can be a, a low day. I said so the mere fact that you can stand in the face of the devil and say, nah, 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 devil, I'm back. I hear, I look good, I smell good, I walk good, I tend good, I'm glorified, blessed with almighty God. I'm Holy Ghost still. I'm what about, are you listening to me? I got to close. Let me go back to my homiletic sermon. So the Bible says, even in now, my second point, in not, don't only be comforted by his promise, but number two, be convicted of his presence. In these last days, you got to be convicted of his presence. Here what Ellen White says as I close. Here what she says here. Back to the screen. Here, you got you to gotta know that the devil is attacking the very pillars of our faith, young people. Challenging the validity of scripture. 
Let's read this together. Let me talk to my youth and, 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 and my brothers and sisters here. Let's read this. It's Satan's plan, last day event. Get this book and read it. In the chapter, The Shaking. It is Satan's plan to weaken the faith of what? In these trying times. Next follows skepticism regarding the vital points of our faith. The pillars of our positions, then doubt in the Holy Scriptures. If you're with the preacher, say yes. Now in our schools and universities, they're teaching this ever-creationist theory, which means that God created everything but man. So he created everything, but when he came to man, evolution takes over. And Catholics are famous in Christendom for this ever-creationist theory. It's a dangerous thing. Because if God didn't create man, it nullifies the deity of God. If you're with the preacher, say yes. People are now moving to a new age concept of self-evolution, which suggests that as human beings, we matriculate to a higher state of consciousness till you become like God. So you know, many of our Gen Z and you young people, my millennials in my age group, are now looking towards yoga and self-meditation rather than prayer and fasting. So you go to the gym and they, and they creep up on you with this yoga thing and they tell you, find peace in yoga. Find peace in self-meditation. But let me tell you, the only peace you can find is in Jesus Christ. Perfect peace as I have in Christ. Will somebody say amen? Let me hold back preaching. I'm going to preach a little bit. Let me go back to the screen. Here it is. Different kind of sermon today. Can I go to the next slide? Even Oprah Winfrey said on her own network some years ago, Jesus is not the only way to life. She says, we matriculate to a higher state of consciousness till we become gods. I love Oprah, don't get me wrong. But I have, to, I have to watch the narrative. But tell Oprah, there's only one God. There's only one way to, to, to happiness. We can't be God. God is God, Isaiah says, who by himself. Uh, will somebody give God praise? Uh, he's higher than the highest. Uh, he's greater than the great. Uh, can I preach this? Uh, no other can take his crown away. Uh, he's the old time, uh, undisputed, uh, undefeated uh, champion uh, of God. Uh, will somebody say praise the Lord? Uh, will sing the song in Sabbath school? Uh, he's so high. Uh, come on, musicians, let's have some church. Uh, you can't get over him. Uh, he's the low, low. Uh, you can't get on the hammer. He's so wide. Uh, you can't get on the hammer. What a mighty God uh, we serve. Uh, angels uh, bow before him. Uh, heaven and earth uh, adore him. Uh, what a mighty God. We're going to have some church soon. Somebody's warming you up. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Who did I say? Who has acted in the most movies in Hollywood. Let's go back to the screen. Let's follow me carefully. He said there's a Netflix series he had, you can find it on YouTube, that's typing the story of God, where he challenges, watch this, the power and purpose of Christ, the Christian God. Comparing our God to other gods because Jesus died on Calvary's cross. So in other words, the Christian God is a failure because he died like every other God. But the story doesn't stop that right there. Because early Sunday morning, can I preach this? He caught up with all power in his hands. He got the keys to hell and the grave. Though we die, yet shall we live. I could preach on that, but that's not what I'm stopping here. And so God, the devil is even moving in the music of our youth. Can we can go to the screen again? Can I show you something else? Let me pop this one open. Sneaking in anti-Christian uh, messages targeting innocent characters like Barbie. I love Barbie. But recently for the Barbie movie, they got a, 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 a song out. Close your eyes. With Nicki Minaj and Ice Spice. And they completely deviated from the innocence of Barbie. And they, I couldn't put all the lyrics up. I don't, I don't know if I have it up here. I don't have it up here. Maybe I don't got the lyrics. Here it is. I'm bad like Barbie. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You don't know, sister. Close your eyes. You don't know. Praise God. You, your eyes are wide open. All the Barbies are... And this is the best of the lyrics I could find because everything else is expletives. The innocence of Barbie is now demoralized 
to being bad, to being degraded women or, or degraded life is plastic, it's fantastic, undress me everywhere. That's what the devil is trying to do. Even recently, Sam Smith in the 2023 Grammy uh, Awards, he sung this song called Unholy. Dressing up like the devil. Performing homosexual activities on stage. My brothers and sisters, for us to not faint and be weary and not utterly fall, we got to have the word in us and on us. Can I tell you what I'm talking about? You got to have the word and say to the devil, devil, get thee behind me, Satan, because I'm armed and dangerous. Will somebody say amen? Touch your name and say, neighbor, be armed and dangerous. Will somebody say amen? Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, be armed and dangerous. Be armed. You just be 66. Spend time. Uh, put your phone uh, on vibrate uh, so it tells you to read the word. Uh, you got to have the word in you, young people, uh, to stand uh, like a brave uh, with a face uh, to the foam. Uh, touch yourself uh, and say, self, uh, I'm armed uh, and dangerous. Uh, will somebody say amen? Uh, so when the devil sends uh, darkness in your life, uh, just take up your B66 uh, and shoot the devil and tell Lord is my light, uh, my salvation. Uh, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength uh, of my life. Uh, of whom shall I be afraid? Uh, when the enemy uh, comes in, uh, our God will raise up uh, a standard. Uh, will somebody say amen? Uh, when the devil uh, sends fear your way, uh, young people take your B66 uh, and shoot the devil uh, and speak over your life uh, and say, God has not given me uh, I'm spirit of fear, but I'm love, 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 and a sound mind. Will somebody say praise the Lord? When haters in your life, just take up your B66 and say, No weapons from the kings we shall prosper. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are powerful. Hallelujah. Say yes. 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 Got to be armed. I'm done. My last point. Won't be long. You got to be armed. Oh boy, this is so sweet. You can't be armed at Nicki Minaj. You can't be armed on Justin Bieber. Call me on your cell phone. <laughs> oh, hell, the Holy Ghost. You can't be armed to the things of this world. You got to be armed <laughs> and dangerous. Was somebody giving praise up in here? Because he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of his anointing. My final point is. Don't only be comforted by his promise. Convinced by his presence. But finally, be convicted of his purpose for your life. Here's the sweetest part of the sermon, y'all. Verse 31 says, but they, let me be truthful to the text. But they that what? Come on, talk back. You had to help me close the sermon. But they that? Wait upon the Lord. Come on, let's talk so we can have some veggie, some... Come on, talk back so we can have some oxtail. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Wrong thing. Veggie tofu and, um, yeah, collard greens and a fried chicken. Sorry, I'm going away. Come on, talk back to me. But they that wait upon the Lord. There is a promise. Shall what? They shall mount up. Come on, mount up. Somebody say mount up. Help me close the sermon with wings as eagles. They shall run. <laughs> Not be wary. <laughs> they shall walk. This blew my mind. The, way, the word wait in the Hebrew is literally translated, uh, pastor, as um, kaba, which means to wait in a state of expectation with eager anticipation, looking for God's next manifestation. Y'all missed that, so let me repeat that so you can tweet that. To be in a state of expectation 
with eager anticipation, looking for God's next manifestation. But can I blow your mind? When I go deeper in the text and the commentaries, you're waiting, not standing, but you're waiting, kneeling. So everything is falling apart. Israel is in bondage. Your life is jacked up. Your credit is jacked up. Your marriage is messed up. Your children are forming a fool. You're flunking your examination. Your friends are all haters in your life. They don't like nothing that you put up on Instagram. But they're watching though. But you're not watching them. You're on your knees. Because you're waiting in a praying position. Y'all with me? And God is saying, when you wait, you shall mount up. Here it is. Three points about the eagles. You shall mount up with wings like eagles. Don't watch the eagle. Watch the eagle's wings. That's the operative phrase. So the, the interesting things about the, the eagle's wings, the three things quickly and I'm done. If you get a glimpse of an eagle outside of being heard or in a cage, you always have to look up. Eagles don't stay on ground level. And God is saying to somebody, for you to mount up and level up. By the way, that was my title. I forgot to say it. It's time to level up. I really wanted to eat something. That's it. It's time to level up. For you to level up like the eagle's wings. After you've prayed and fasted. God is going to blow your mind. For in order for folks to see you, the next time you've prayed and fasted, they got to look up. Because the next place God is going to put you is so high. That your haters can touch you. Good to see you, Roger. Good to see you. And here it is. Here, let, me, let me break it down a little bit more. I was reading a devotional where, where uh, maybe you guys saw it. When the eagles, when eagles fly, oftentimes they are attacked by over eight vultures. The vultures come down and they swarm the eagle and start picking at its neck. Because the neck gives the eagles the direction to where they fly. But you know what the eagle does? He allows the vultures to keep five, six, seven, eight of them just knocking on him. All he does, he doesn't fight the haters. He just keeps going further up. And the higher he goes up, the air is so thin for the vultures, or what we call in the Caribbean, drunk, drunk, yeah. But I'm not in Jamaica, I'm in America. Somebody say amen. My, my wife is American, so we're Jamer Jamer Jamaican. So what the eagle does, it keeps on going higher. And the higher it goes, the vultures, they fall. Can I speak this in your spirit? Don't watch your haters. Don't watch the bad mind people. Keep looking up. Because the higher you go, is the lower your haters. Oh, this is sweet. Second point. Second point. Speaking in your life. Second point is, huh, in a close physiological analysis of the eagle's wings, an eagle has a wingspan, a grown eagle of seven feet or more. So they can breathe at high altitudes. And where other birds fly and the air gets too thin, they go down. The eagle continues to soar. God is saying to us today, if you faithfully wait on him and abide in his will, I will give you grace to succeed where others have failed. But the problem why we never achieve our purpose is because we have a chicken mentality. Oh, this is getting good. It's getting gooder. It's getting gooder. It's getting, it's getting real good. <laughs> we got a chicken mentality. Uh, we attempt very little and we think very small. And our faith in God in our trials, when trials come, we get weak. Chickens can't fly. <laughs> they, they, they take off for a few seconds and they flutter down back. Uh, let me put it where you catch it. So, so when I used to be in Jamaica and my grandmother, when she was alive, she lived in a place called Bella's Gate, Blue Hole. You go Barton's and Red Ground. Y'all hear me. Y'all help me. Some of y'all keeping quiet. Don't want nobody to know you come from country. But for those who want to remember where you come from, red ground, go up, 
and in the, in the summertime, Sister Nissa, we'd go, we'd go, and my grandmother had chicken cubs, and she had all kind of stuff rearing and food and all kind of stuff. And, and I, we would fall in love with these chickens. And the small one, I had a small one called Benny. And every summer, I would look for Benny. And Benny got bigger and fatter each summer. Till one summer, my grandmother said, who wants curry chicken? <laughs> why y'all laughing? Why and I said, me, me, me. Not knowing that brother Benny. They grabbed brother Benny and he fluttered and tried to fly. I never saw him fly, but he was flying. And they grabbed him and they, and they, and they cut off it. Chickens can't fly. Eagles are leaders. Chickens are followers. Eagles soar to new heights, but chickens stay on ground level. Eagles focus on above, being above their enemies, but chickens get killed. I'm done now. Final point about the eagle is, that blows my mind. When the eagle goes into a storm, the storm doesn't put the eagle down. You know what the eagle does? It doesn't fly away from the storm. Can I preach this? The eagles go into the storm. And when it goes into the storm, it does something like this. It shifts, adjusts, and go higher. It goes into the storm, shifts to the negative energy, uses the same negative energy of the storm and push above the storm. Can I preach this? So when bad mind people come your way, just shift. Yo, come on, shift. Yo, better do it. Come on, shift. Somebody say shift. Everybody's doing it. Shift from the front to the back. Shift. Why are you smiling at me? Come on, try to say shift. Adjust. Shift, adjust, and go higher. So when haters come your way, just shift, adjust, and go higher. When darkness is in your life, just shift, adjust, and go higher. Come on, let's have some church musicians. Will somebody say amen? When you got no money to spend, just shift, adjust, and go higher. When sickness is rocking your body, just shift, adjust, and go higher. When you lost your mind, lost your faith, lost your joy, just shift, adjust, and go higher. When you feel our hope is lost, just shift, adjust, and go higher. Shift, shift, shift. When storms come your way, just shift, adjust, and go higher. I'm pressing on. Be up and away, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying on, be up and down. Lord, plant my feet, Lord, plant my feet, Lord, plant my feet, Lord, plant my feet, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Will somebody lift up their hands? Stand to your feet, put your hands in the air, wave it like you just don't care. Lift up your hands, hold your cage. Be lifted up, give a lasting doors, and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? Who is this King of Glory? The Lord God, strong and mighty, He's mighty, mighty. Say yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. By the glory, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, by the glory, revive, revive us. Again, just shift, adjust, and go higher. Just shift. Mm -hmm. Just shift, 
<laughs> Can I talk to somebody going through a difficult season in your life? All you got to do is shift, <laughs> adjust, <laughs> and go higher. <laughs> Just shift, <laughs> adjust, <laughs> and go higher. <laughs> Anybody knows what I'm talking about today? Just shift, go higher, 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 higher. Lift Jesus, higher, higher. The church is standing with me. We're standing. You're saying, Pastor, I'm a young person and I'm going through difficult circumstances. But I know that there is a God that can still stand by my side. I'm broken, struggling, going through it, Pastor. Some stuff in my life. But there's a broken vessel. God can. You're saying, Pastor, I need some prayer right now. There's some stuff in my life and I want a special attention. Just walk out of your seat. Let's talk to God together. Let's be real. Let's be real for a moment. Praise God, my brother. Let's be real for a moment. Yes, there's stuff in your life that you want a special prayer for. You're navigating a difficult season. But you're saying, Pastor, I'm going up on the rough side of the mountain. By God's grace, I know my God's got my back. Just walk out, walk out, walk out. All my young people, just walk out. I don't need to be shouting. I don't need to be talking too long. Just walk out. Just walk out. Can I bring that bottle of water for me, brother? Just walk out. Get that track ready. We make it. Get track ready. God can make a way where it seems to be no way. Come, my sister, come. The devil will try everything to distract you. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with Instagram. Nothing wrong with WhatsApp. What's the purpose, y'all? It's good to look at what's happening in the world. But what are you posting on your Instagram? Is there one thing about God? Or are you just posting selfies about yourself? Or are you priding about Beyonce the Queen Bee star? Or are you connected to Jesus the bride and more than star? What are you, what, what's, your, what's your Christianity giving? What, what's your Christianity giving? Is it giving faithness? Or is it giving righteousness? Is it given Christianity or it's given ungodliness? We got to get ourselves together, y'all. We got to be real. Earthquakes don't come to New York City just like that. In Taiwan, they haven't seen an earthquake in 25 years. Can't you see? It's almost time, listen to the preacher today, for the Lord to come. I can hear the people say, the stars of heaven are glowing dim. It must be, listen to the preacher today. My second appeal. My members are going through challenges. You want God to be in your life in a mighty way. Just come, come, come to Jesus, come. You're standing there, you're saying, Pastor, I need special prayer for my family, for my children, for my marriage. Come, just walk out, walk out, walk up. Give them some space. Come right up to the altar. I'm going to invite my praise team to come. Could you play that track for me and then ask the band to take over? Come right up to Jesus. Come, come, come. Come on, shake my hand. Come. Come on, shake my hand. Come. Come, my brother. Come on, shake my hand. Come right up here. Come, my sister. Come. Come, let me shake your hand. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Stay right here. Come on. Praise God. Come, my sister. Come. Come. Come on. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Come, my sister. Could you play it, my friend? Play. Time is going. Can I pray? Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Just come. 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 
going through it. But God can make a way where it seems to be no way. Just listen and you can follow. Don't worry about it. God can make a way where it seems to be no way. He's able to lift you. He's able to save you. Listen to me today. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. Turn the tracks some more. You are here moving in oh mess. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. So you are here moving in all men. Yes, Lord, we magnify your Lord. We glorify your Lord. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. Everybody say, we make miracle work as a promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Everybody say, we make miracle work as a promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, lift your hands and thank you, Father Lord. You Heal every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Turn lives around. I worship you. Thank you so much. I worship you. You are here. Let me live. I worship you, I worship you, lift your voice and say, we make miracle work, so promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. All hands lifted, all hands lifted, all hands lifted, all hands lifted, we make miracle God can make a way. But it seems to be no way. Go into your difficulty. Go into your challenges. He's able. He's able. He's able. Miracle work. To break the chains. Keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Cause you, you made a way. When I'm bound to a gown's wall And it looks as if it was over You, you made a way And we're standing here Only because You made a way Make a way. God can make a way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, speak over your life today. Speak over your life. Only because you say you move mountains, you cause walls with your power, Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. There was nothing bad. There was nothing but us and we're standing here. Can it cut the track? Cut the track. Come on, musicians. Cut the track. Cut the track. So you move mountains. Cut the track. You cause walls to fall with your power. Lift your hands. Lift it. Speak over your life. For me, there is nothing. 
impossible. And we're standing here. And we're standing here. Only because you met. We're standing here. And we're standing here. Only because you met. We're standing here. And we're standing here. Only because. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say, You're my God. You're all together lovely. Hallelujah. All together love. All together wonderful to me. Here I am. Take a minute, take a minute to talk, talk to God about your issues. Talk to God about your issues. You're broken, you're, you're shackled, you're going through addictions, wrestling with sexual deviances, going through your financial breakthrough, breakdown. But Isaiah says, Hast thou not known? Don't you remember who your God is? When all hope seems lost, that's when God steps in. Talk to God. All Young people, lay it all, lay it all, lay it all at the feet of Jesus. Talk to God about your issues. Surrender everything. Your fears, your anxieties, your struggles, your secret sins. Just lay it down, lay it down, lay it down. Lay it down. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We magnify. We glorify your name. Even in our mess, you still stop and lift us up. When our backs are against the wall, when all hope seems lost, you never leave nor forsake us. Thank you, God, for never leaving. Thank you, God, for stopping by our side. So, Lord, I lift up my hands and I pray for a sweet anointing. First, it will fall on every young person, whichever age group, young adults, teenage, whatever age group that we're in. All of us have our issues, 
We got our stuff that we got to wrestle with. Stuff that we can't talk about. But Lord, we ask you, don't give up on us. Stick with us, Lord. Keep wrestling your will in us. Keep lifting us up when we fall. Because we still believe grace will always be greater than all our sins. I pray for those who came to the altar. Family issues. Financial issues. Emotional issues. Sickness in their bodies. Doctors have given up. But thank God there's room at the cross. There's room for somebody today. Somebody who's broken. Thank God there is no broken vessel that you can mend. So come by here, Lord. Come by here. Somebody's praying, Lord. A mother is praying for a son. A father is praying for a daughter. Somebody needs a job, Lord. Somebody needs a breakthrough, Lord. Somebody's rent is due. Somebody's marriage is broken. Going through a divorce. But we beg you, Father. Devil, take your flight. Jesus, step right in. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Attend unto our cry. From the ends of the earth. So we cry, Lord, to thee. When our hearts get overwhelmed, we beg you, Father, lead us to the rock that is higher than I. And so, Lord, I speak life into somebody's situation. I lift up my hands and I speak victory in somebody's life. I lift up my hands and I pray for sweet anointing of healing, of deliverance, of breakthrough. We beg you, God, listen to me today, God. We are pleading with you. Stop by Mount Zion today and help somebody. Creating us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Take us not away from thy presence, O oh God. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. But restoring us the joy of your salvation. And renew a right spirit within us. So Lord, I pray for the South England Youth Federation, New England South. I pray for every team member, every director, Brother Cecil T, every member, every youth in this region. Hide us behind the cross and help us to remain faithful. Help us to be people in the world. So when you shall come, we shall hear, well done. As we go now, consecrate us now to thy service, Lord. By the power of grace divine, may our souls look up with a steadfast hope and all our wells be lost in thine. So let the words of our mouth, meditation of our hearts, be found acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are all strength and all redeemer. Let the church of the Lord say, Amen. Amen. Come on, lift up your hands and say hallelujah. You're say praise God. the Lord. Hear my cry
God, you're all together lovely, all together lovely, all together We thank God for such a beautiful word today. Could we all please stand for our closing hymn, which will be hymn number 524, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs>
not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. to him who is able to keep me from falling from falling now unto him now unto him who is able to keep me from
Yeah, I agree. Mount Zion was on fire today. What a message we had today. It was a timely transforming message here from right. Pastor Javon White. Today, today you came across a point that we have to be convicted by the purpose. For me, that really resounds with you, but give us a little synopsis of what's your ideology about being convicted by his purpose. Well, let me just say it's such a joy to be here. I had a good time uh, fellowshipping with you all. A tremendous program. Being convicted by God's purpose, it means, therefore, to stay in his will. Oftentimes, we have to give away our plans for his purpose. And if our plans supersede his purpose, they will be out of his way. So dwelling in his presence, feasting in the word, uh, spending time in meditation will reveal God's purpose in our lives. And so when we are confounded, that's the word I want to use, we're confounded, we have come to the realization that listen, there's purpose on my life, there's potential with me, uh, I can do great things with God, and the Lord speaks into our lives, he will reveal his will. So we, we put away our will for his way and our plans for his purpose. You also said that we should not have spiritual amnesia. Can you break that down a little bit for us? Right, so from the word of God, in that context of the scripture, for 400 years of bondage, they forgot about God. And spiritual amnesia can happen. God did something today, and as soon as next week comes and we go through a, a greater crucible, we forgot what happened last week. So if he did it before, he can do it again. What I always say to young people is, do a prayer journal. Write a prayer journal, and I say, check the history. When, it, when you go through stuff, go back in that prayer. Because we will get fearful, and we will feel like, listen, man, it, it, it ain't going to work out. But when you, when you go back in the journal and read back the history of what God has done, it will give you that greater um, conviction to say, you know what, let me just be still and let God work this one out for me. Not have spiritual amnesia, not forget spiritually all the things that God has done for me. Yes, fantastic words. Um, one of the points that you really drove home was yes. towards the ending, which is about the eagle. Right. You know, you talked about how the eagle, when it's going through a storm, it doesn't fly away, but no. it goes through the storm. Yes, yes, so yes. I know that there's so many people, young people, that are going through a storm. So what are some biblical pieces of advice you can give to them to help support them as they are going through a storm? Wow, wow. So going through a storm, there are so many things that go through our heads, you know, fears and anxiety. What I will say is, you know, in 2 Timothy tells us, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So the spirit of fear makes way for the spirit of faith. And so we, we, we speak faith and we speak words of hope into our lives. And that scripture tells us that God loves us. And with his love, he helps us to overcome our fears with the power he gives us. So that's the scripture I always seek to speak over my life. Devil, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love. The love that God has for me gives me the power to overcome. Because the Bible says, another good scripture is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can ask another question. So another part that was really interesting, I was starting to like laugh about it, yeah. was about how sometimes we might be like going on into the world on Monday, Tuesday to Friday, but mm. then on Sabbath, we want to yeah, praise God. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that there's so many young people out there that are battling that, the peer pressure and uh, wanting to fit in. Mm. So what are some pieces that you can like help with them to help support them during this time when they want to party on Friday, but mm. they want to praise God on Sabbath? Wow. So in the week, when we, what we put our minds on is what will be reflected in our actions. And so you got to be deliberate in infusing special, um, I call them power, power spots in my day. That, that time to connect with God. I call them power spots. So, so I, I put my phone, because I, I, I get distracted. I'm a pastor, but I'm human. So I put on my phone um, certain times of the day where, where it alarms. And, and you know, there's a, this app called YouVersion that I use a lot. Just, just this week, we're looking at the armor of God. If you, if you read a new version, it was looking at the armor of God. And so it, it, it alarms um, in the morning, gets me up. It alarms at midday and evening. And it, it deliberately reminds me there is the word I need to read. So I would say 
infuse infuse moments in your in your day where you deliberately spend time with God. The next thing is to find a support system, friends who are like minded, who really are feasting after righteousness, who really want to have a spiritual upliftment in their life. Because who we are is who we keep company with. You know, even Instagram. Yeah, I said it today. If we find time. If you go on my Instagram, you'll see stuff about the gym and, and you know, sports, you know, because I like that kind of stuff. And, and music and comedy, but you also see stuff that will motivate me to find God. So I'm not all about God, 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 you know. I'm, I'm human like anybody else. But at the same time, you know, God must supersede everything else. And let me tell you something. It's very difficult. That's why, you know, when you're preaching, and um, I always say to myself, if I'm not reaching youth, it makes no sense. Because the youth are the future. We are, we are the future. And so what I, what I tend to do is to say to my young people, try to find time for God in the week because on Sabbath, you're not going to get him just like that. If you're not trying to feast on him in the week, it's going to be difficult to, to get him on Sabbath. So, so I would say infuse deliberate spots in your day for God. Have a prayer partner. Have a support system. People will call in, check in with you to see how you're doing and, and, and help you along the path. So I know you mentioned that that human aspect to your life. Obviously, right. you're a pastor, right. you're still human. Right. But how can we manage that thin line of balance where it's not only God, 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 but at the end of the day, we're humans and we, mm. we yearn for, you know, simple mm. interests of the world. Right, right. But, right. and we talk about the clean, the clean fun. Mm. How do you balance it? Because mm. I know it's a very thin line. Yeah, you can get is, caught up is. in the sports, <laughs> you can get caught up in your it team, <laughs> the music, but is, at the end of the day, you can't let it overtake the right, aspect right. of God. You know, like how do you manage that thin line? Yeah, you know what it is. I, as I said, you know, your your mind, your mind reacts to what you feed it to. So if you are trying daily to have a strong devotional life, I would start there. A strong prayer life, a strong devotional life. Um, your 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 um, your your life. I'm looking at my wife. She's trying to find me. <laughs> I'm right here, honey. She's trying to find me. Right. <laughs> um, when you have a strong devotional life, it will help you to, to provide that balance. Because as you behold Christ, you become changed, the Bible says. So the more you spend time in God, there's something that will just trigger in your head and say, ah, oh, is it going a little too far? You know, I always say to young people, be careful of somebody who is talking you out of what God has placed in you. <laughs> you know, I always say that to myself. Be careful of those people or stuff that talk you out of what God has talked you in to. So, so that, that, that will help you to discern, spiritual discernment, what is right from what is wrong. As we end, as we close, I just want to know one word from each of us to describe the service today. Just one word. I would have to describe it as overflowing. For me, it's tremendous, tremendous. For me, it's timely. Timely. Especially for me personally, timely. Honor and glory to God. I would say probably needed. Needed to hear that. Needed to hear that. So, as we close out the divine worship portion of our service, we do want to welcome you all back for 5 p.m. We do have an a, a special AY ceremony going on at 5 p.m. So, please log back on. Uh, we will be here. We hope to see you here too online and dwelling, uh, worshiping with us still. So as we exit out, I want to say thank you to the pastor. Thank you, Janelle. Thank you, Kyle, for joining, joining me here. Uh, happy Sabbath. And we'll see you later. Sabbath, everyone. Thank you.